Okay, so that's my lunch consumed. Did you have a good lunch, my friend? Uh, my, my, my lunch um, consisted of putting stock on <laughs> onto the system to find out my stock was up, which I'm very pleased with. So that is good. That's one thing to be happy about today. Um, and then, uh, yeah, kind of sat here waiting for, for you to come on, have a quick chat with uh, with Steve. Steve 50, those of you mm -hmm. that might know from the chat, um, although there's no one watching them. Who knows? Might have to, I'll tell you what. Let's, let's talk. Well, Lampard's now been confirmed as the, as the Everton manager. That is a definite. It's in that he has. And he'll probably make more signings in, in what, the next eight hours or so than, than David Moyes has made in the previous 31 days. But <laughs> probably made more signings in the next eight hours, eight hours, etc. Permanently, I don't know. Just, just, just cut off on me, on the other monitor. The, the Moyes is made in the last three transfer windows, Rob. Yes, you, you can, John. You can. <laughs> what's, what's, what's John asked? I'm off. What's, He's yeah, just yeah. asked if he can swear. Yeah. Trust me. Trust me. I will be. <laughs> As the afternoon goes on, I mean, go to the we'll probably do another couple of hours here. Maybe grab some, grab some grubs for dinner and then come back on for the tail end of this. What I can only describe, John, as a shit show. Um, I've, I've got, kind I've got of... nothing. I've kind of I've kind of gone past the point of um, frustration now, and I'm now into the what is it now eight and a bit hours there or thereabouts. Um, eight hours, twenty one minutes and twenty seven seconds. Yeah, I've I've kind of gone into the territory of resignation, and and I've I've kind of got a little bit of gallows humour that's creeping in. I'm just sort of like, you know. So you've got the um, other way I to have me. seen I've that. From being frustrated. I've gone from being yes. frustrated to being angry, Rob. Mm, don't know about anger. I got I got more important things to be angry about at the minute. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. Frustration, I can I I get, but I've kind of gone past that now. I've, I've like I say, I've had thirty one days of this, and it's just like <laughs> whatever. But Lingard, yes, we have. I have seen that. I still don't think it's going to happen. I I don't think that. that I think if it's a choice between keeping Lingard for the remainder of his contract or moving him on, be it on loan or a permanent deal to a team that could finish above them. I, I think he stays at Manchester United. Um, I think Newcastle's a more viable option from the point of view that, that in terms of their position within the Premier League, they're not going to challenge Manchester United. So I think that is, is more likely. <clears throat> Do you reckon we need to stop dicking around with a loan deal and just go in with a firm, hard cash offer and see what they say? Yeah, yeah, I do. But if if they're not going to, to budge, I don't. I don't think that they're going to budge whether it's a loan deal or whether it's a, a, a permanent. I just think Manchester United, like I say, from a PR point of view, will just say, do you know what, the amount of money. Because what would we? What do you think we would sign Lingard for? Ten million. Listen, and let's let's say he comes to West Ham and he he gets us to a position above Manchester. We get to a position above Manchester United. He has a storming couple of months. He scores goals, gets assists, performances, and all the rest of it. And we finish above Manchester United, which isn't the beyond the realms of possibility. Let's be honest. And we finish in a a, a, a superior. European competition. So we finish in the Champions League, they finish in Europa, or we finish in Europa and they finish in the conference or whatever. Any money that they've taken in for selling Lingard is, has been vastly outweighed by the, the higher finish in the Premier League and the superior European competition. I, I've got to be honest, Spence, I wouldn't go to 15. Not for a player who's going to be free in a couple of months. I really wouldn't. It's, it's difficult, Rob, because I'm looking at it and that 15 million can be the difference for us on right now top eight to top six finish mm. and 
a different uh, a, a different set. And, and and John's just John's just nailed it there. John's just nailed it there. We're, we're arguing over two million quid for Kelly a car, yet we're, we're quite happy to say that we've offered fifty million. <laughs> and it, and if what I'm being told, or what I've been told, mm. is true, that Kutinski is willing to go, and I think that's the difference, John. Is that Kutinski is willing to bankroll the move for for Philip? Mm-hmm. But the other two are not willing to step up and stump up the extra two million quid. If that's true, then that might be what that is. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it's not. I, I'm not sitting here saying I know it all. All I'm saying is I've been I've been uh, privy to a little bit of information. Whether that information is right or wrong, I, I, again, I couldn't tell you. It's a case of waiting and yeah. seeing. I was told that Telexar would sign by lunchtime. Um, or, you know, it should be done by lunchtime, barring any hiccups. Well, if this £2 million is now the hiccup, um, then that's a hiccup, and, and that's why that's not going for it. But again, I'm, I'm frustrated, I'm angry, I'm annoyed, I'm irritated, I'm... It's just the same old, same old. Again, yeah. it's the same old, same old. Um, we're, we're sitting here with just over eight hours, 17 minutes to go, and... What we're conversing on is the serious lack of signings that we've made. It's not even the fact that we, or it's not even the fact we haven't made signings. It's the it's mm. serious fact it takes us four weeks to get to a point where we're now rushing to try and get a deal for, you know, Darwin Nunes, or whatever his bloody name is, mm. or, you know, Coletta Carr with dicking around over two million quid. Or, you know, we're sitting here and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this. I've got, so I've got you here and then up here, I've got me other monitor and I've got yep. Guy Go. And literally every other bloody word is Bournemouth, Bournemouth, Bournemouth. And oh, I'm no, like, it's crazy, isn't it? Hold the phone here a minute. What are we doing? They're signing Campwell. I think yep. Campbell's a bad shout. They're signing Nathaniel Phillips. I think Nathaniel Phillips is a great shout. They're mm-hmm. signing uh, Kiefer Rufer Moore or whatever his fucking name is. Rufy yep. Moore. Um, for three and a half million. Again, a guy that scored plenty of goals. And we're sitting here going, la la la, twiddle thumbs, la la la. We've got, we've got a board of Europe up on the wall at Rush Green or at London Stadium or wherever you know, David Sullivan's currently sat. And they're throwing darts at country's gates in and going, right, okay. Well, we got there, Dave. Dave, we got Belgium. Okay. Karen, open up the Panini sticker album for the World Cup. Open up the Panini sticker album. Right, hold it against the wall. I'm going to throw a dart. Bosh, who we got? Ben Take. Right, let's see if we can get him on loan. And that's how it feels like they're doing it, Rob. I'll guarantee you David Gold it. David Gold it China a minute ago. And Sullivan, Sullivan's going, Karen, Karen, a China yeah. in there. China and <laughs> not in there. Can you find an encyclopedia Boom. of Chinese players? Madagascar. No? Okay. Um, is there a player called Zhao Jing? Can we, can we try and sign Zhao Jing? Yeah, Jing's? that'll do. That'll do. Oh, well, he was the emperor 400 years ago. Shit, we're going to look like idiots. Too late for that. <laughs> Too late for that. I could, that. Mate, that's what's going through my mind. It's just going through my mind. It hurts. It hurts the, so this much. one here that Spencer's touched on, the board told Moyes to go get who you want. Do you believe that? No. No. There's probably one person on the board that said, go get who you want. Mm. And I'll bankroll it. And that will be Kutinski. Because I, 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 I just talking to Mr. 50. And me and 50 were having a quick chat out of the, uh, yeah. on the phone. And... Um, I did turn around and say to him, we've only got two more transfer windows of these fucking Muppets in charge of the club. club." Because if I remember rightly, it's 2023 that they do sell up. If, Mm. yeah, yeah, going by cash sums and all the rest of it. Now, if that's true, we've got two more windows of this absolute dirge to wait on before hopefully... Kutinski goes, there's my pocket money, off you go. Yeah, there you go. See, I weren't lying. Meagle knows. No, no. 
That's, that's, that was the name that they hit the dart. Took 15 attempts. Karen Brady's got a few new piercings in her ears where they missed the, missed the, uh, missed the dart ball. Because David, David Gold's a little bit going to the old cataracts are coming up on the eyeballs, bless him. He, I don't... Allegedly. 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 <laughs> um, Mitch has just said, as we all know, Diver and Dave. Yeah. Diver and Dave, plural. All ruddy three of them. I don't think Dave Gold's got too to much to do with it. He's probably no, sitting no, in his no, rocking no, chair, know. sort of dribbling into his mug of Horlick, so wouldn't worry about that too chair, much. Wheelchair. I mean, no, listen. I, I, I don't like to see. I don't like to see a lot of the shit that he's aimed at David Gold on. Oh no, 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 no. On Twitter. I, in fact, I don't like to see a lot of shit that he's aimed at either of them. You know, wishing death on their families. Never. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, line. yeah. There's a line you don't cross, and 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 especially you know the guys that confronted Gold um, when he was driving off a, a year or two ago, I think. And it's just it's it's just sad that that. that so listen, I don't even think he has a control. I say he's got a controlling interest in the club as in state wise. I don't think he has any control over what goes the club at the minute, to be fair. And I, it's upset him, really. Wolves and Southampton have made inquiries for a Perry Saint Germain player. Just yeah, literally sure. just you come know, up. You know it's happening, didn't you? You know that's going yeah. to happen. Yeah, uh, young, young lad. I'm going to try and pronounce it, and I apologize if I. Mangle his name, the Jed, the Jedi, Jedi, Jedi Gasama. Uh, he's a Jedi. This is not yeah, the player you're looking he's a, for. He's a Jedi. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the player will be staying in the French capital on deadline day. Apparently, it's believes Wolves' interest in the player came before they turned their attention to Chiquino, who they signed from Estoril this month. Okay, eighteen years of age, five. Five goals in his last six games for PSG's under-19 side. And he's got 18 months left on his contract. Mm, yeah, good luck. Yeah, but again, that's under, that's, that's under 18s, Rob, and I can't. Yeah. But like, but no disrespect. Um, apparently, um, I've just missed it. Oh, Ooh, hold on. This one oh, literally oh. just grabbed my attention. You know, we were talking about Delhi Alley earlier. Yes. Everton. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I, listen, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, again, it's probably another name on the list that um, Lampard gave over when he did his um, mm. when he did his, 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 his business plan, if you will, for the job and, and laid out some some ideas and, and and whatnot going forward. So I can imagine that there was a little bit of um, there was a little bit of cash floating around and, and other bits and pieces, or ideas floating around and little other bits and pieces that you know he would have pushed for. Um, uh, yeah, I think Spencer's right. I, I think he likes to try and stick around. You know, I, I, I think that is correct. I think that is correct. I can't think of any. Right, right. I'm not having it. I'm I'm going to go in and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go on Facebook. I want to know. I want to know who that was. I yeah, want to know. Any- Anyone that's watching this on Facebook, unless you do a few little bits and pieces, you come up as us as just Facebook user. You that's could be fine. my dad. It's a gentleman called Russell Brooks. Um, he's uh, Russell. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know Russ. You know Russ. I, I yeah, actually yeah, thought it was mine. my brother. I actually thought it was my brother because my brother still absolutely rips the shit out of me because I thought Stavio was going to be the next big thing. And my brother <laughs> still, to this day, Rips the absolute piss out of me for yeah. um for things. So it's just come up on Sky on their um on their not on their ticket tape. What, what was the what was the old um the video printer? Wasn't it? Do you remember, oh remember the yeah, printer? the old video printer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grandstand, well, that's what wasn't it? Yeah, that's what they've got going on at the moment, and it's come up again that Leeds are adamant that they will. Bournemouth not... made another signing, yeah. Freddie Woodman. Yeah, Freddie Woodman has just come up. Done deal. Um, so that that could be the that, that's possibly the first of four that are going to come through the door for them today. Bloody hell! They really. Um, but yeah, Leeds are, Leeds are adamant. Leeds are adamant that Calvin Phillips will not be sold in this transfer window. Nah. Um, Bournemouth have, grew, uh, have now agreed a deal with Liverpool to take Nat Phillips on loan again. Please stop. I'm, I'm getting the ump now. Like, no disrespect. He's, he's better than that. He's better than that. 
Todd came well with a loan with an option to buy now from Norwich. I'm guessing that's going to be if they go up, that that's going to be a key. Yeah. Um, but I hope, mate. Key for more, roof for more, roofy. I, mate, I just, I'm, I'm pretty much sick to the back teeth of, of sitting here seeing every other team name come up being attached to a signing or in talks or anything else. And we're currently sitting here, and all we're seeing is West Ham have had a big rejection for this. We've had a big <laughs> rejection for that. Are they? Oh, we're trying. We're trying. We're very trying. Very trying. I'm going to test your knowledge, Duke, just because I can. Yeah, please do. Just, just, just to sort of relieve the monotony of us having a transfer window where basically, as far as a West Ham fan is concerned, we pretty much know there's not an awful lot that's very likely to happen. Can you tell me, can you tell me which player played in four World Cups, the final tournament, yeah? Played in four World Cups. He actually won the World Cup in one of them. But never played in a World Cup qualifier. Hmm. Just, just completely at random. I thought I'd ask you that one, just um, to sort of, I, just to mix it up a bit, because I'm an evil I bastard. Have, You're going to Google it now. You're going to Google it now, aren't you? No, I just want to see if I'm, I'm, I'm correct. I have the feeling. Yeah. Oh, Spencer's gone, Cafu. Don't Google it, guys. Don't Google it. It spoils the fun. If you know it, great. He's enjoying my yellow tie. Cheers, mate. Um, Steve's gone Mateus. It's not Cafu and it's not Mateus. I say he played in four World Cups. He actually won the World Cup in one of those four tournaments. Um, he played in four World Cup finals, but never played in a qualifier. And it is in living memory. Um, well, it is if you're my age. Don't start. <laughs> Maldini. Oh, oh, oh. Spencer, you are very, very, very warm. You are warm, my oh, friend. That's, that's, that's fucked me out the window then. You that's, are that's warm. Me. Maldini is warm, but you haven't hit the bullseye. Pele, no. Roy of the Rovers. <laughs> did he play? Did he play with Maldini? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, fairly level. sure. Yes, I'm fairly sure they intersected at, at some point or another. At club level or international level? Uh, definitely an international level. Uh, together, Maldini played spent... together. No, they wouldn't have. They wouldn't have played together at club level. I'm fairly sure. Um, but they did play together at international. Baggio, no. Baggio never won the World Cup. Baresi. Oh, close, close, close. But wrong. Not Baresi. Not Dino Zoff. Not Dino Baggio. And not Andrea Perlo. This is some good guesses, though. They're showing some really good knowledge, this lot. Yeah, I'm, the man. Well, Zoff was 40 when um, Italy won the World Cup in 1982. He was, he was the captain. Um, Paolo Rossi. No, wasn't him. Good guess. Good guess. Very good guess, but wrong. You've absolutely fucking stumped here because everyone, all these names that are being rattled through are yeah. pretty much where, I'm, where, where my mind was going. Yeah, no, he, 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 he's an Italian international, where he was, obviously. He's long since retired. Mitch, the question is, which player, and don't Google it because it's, like I say, it spoils the fun, just a little bit of, little bit of fun. Um, which player played in four World Cup finals tournaments, won the World Cup, but never played in a World Cup qualifier? And we've had some good guesses. Maldini? No, it's not Maldini. Um, well, because there's now three generations of Maldinis that have played football, isn't there? Because you had Cesare Maldini, the father of, um, yeah. obviously, Paolo Maldini. And then I think he's got his son as well. So I think there's there's three generations. Um, Del Piero, nope, not Alessandro Del Piero, not Zanetti, no, nope, not Del Boy, not Del Boy. 
Oh, it's, there's some really good guesses that are coming through here. Just to just to sort of relieve the the sort of boredom of a West Ham transfer window, um, I thought I'd throw this one out because I'm a I'm a horrible sod. Um, I'm just going back to the uh, give some position, Rob. Mark. Give some position. No, 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 no. Ah, now hang on. This was six minutes ago. Six minutes ago, Hugo Ekatike deal is now getting more complicated. No full agreement on player's side, and there are also problems for future sale clause asked by Reams. Newcastle will push again for Jesse Lingard, along with West Ham. Triggering his broom. No, wrong. Donna Doni. Oh, oh, good guess, but wrong. Buffon. No, not Buffon. <laughs> Harry Potter and his broom. No, no. Uh, you'll, you'll get the answer and you'll go, oh, did he? Is that right? There you go. Go on. No, he's too young. Who? No. Not Zanetti, no. It wasn't Zanetti Argentinian. I thought Zanetti was Argentinian. But there you go. Capello. Interesting answer. Wrong, but interesting. Ancelotti. Oh, good knowledge, but no. Cannavaro. Uh, Cannavaro. No. My mother-in-law and her broom and black cat. Camaraderie, the Italian. Do you know what I have spent? I've spent most of my my weekend this weekend watching Fools and Horses. I've been I've been watching Fools and Horses just like nonstop in any spare. In fact, I actually did it while I was eating my lunch. Cannavaro, no, no. You're all going to be scratching your heads, and you're all. I'm going to give you the answer, or I'll, maybe someone will get the answer. Right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Do you mean to sort of give you a little batch of clues? What's his oh, first name? Oh, 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 we have the right answer. I was about to fucking say that. Giuseppe Bergami. Giuseppe Bergami. Right, okay. He was a late call-up to the 1982 squad at the age of 18. He played in the final three matches of the tournament, but he wasn't a regular during the qualifying process for the tournament. As holders in 86, Italy didn't have to qualify. Uh, and they were hosts in 1990, so again, didn't have to qualify. Um, and they were, he was dropped under Arrigo Sacchi, but Burgaby was then a late call-up um, in 98 when he made three appearances. There you go. But he never played a World Cup qualifier. Isn't that incredible? Won the World Cup, played in four tournaments, never played a qualifier. There you go. No, it wasn't spaghetti. Lingard, yes, I, I still can't see it, Kent. Can't see that. I think that because of the the PR catastrophe that would unfold if if he came to us and and we finished above them, which is not inconceivable. I don't think don't think he's coming. Don't. Oh, think I've coming. got one for you. Well done, Spence. Well done. He he did man Mark Maradona. Yes. Go on. Okay, I have played with all of these players, but I have never played for any of these teams. Who am I? Okay, so he's never played for any of the teams. Yeah. But he has played with the players. So Real Madrid, he never played for Real Madrid. Yeah. But has played alongside Angel Di Maria. Right. Kareem Benzema, Michael Essien, and Lasana Diara. You might want to write this down, Rob, because I've got 12 players. Oh, Jesus. I ain't got a pen anywhere nearby. Hang on, hang on, just a tick. Hang on. I'll read it out to the rest of you uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the chat. 16 of you. So, this player has never played for Real Madrid. Tottenham or Chelsea, but has played with Angel Di Maria, Karim Benzema, Michael Essien, Lasana Diara. Played, played with Serge Aurier, Tom Huddleston, 
Michael Johnson. Right. I've, and I've, I've literally just got back with a pen and paper. Okay. Right, so Real Madrid. So he's never played for Real Madrid. But he has but played with. He has played alongside Angel Di Maria. Di Maria. Kareem Benzema. Benzema. Michael Essien. Essien. And Lasana Diara. Diara. He has never played for Tottenham. But he yeah. has played alongside Serge Aurier. He has played alongside Tom Huddleston. He has played alongside Michael Dawson. And he has played alongside Moussa Sissoko. Right. And he has never played for Chelsea. Right. No. He has never played for Chelsea, but has appeared alongside Loic Remy. Denver mm. Bar. Mm -hmm. Dave Azpilicueta. Mm -hmm. And Florin Maluda. Okay. Hmm. Don't think it's Neil Webb. No, I think uh, it's just a little bit. Steve out of hasn't got friend. a clue. Oh, hello! You got you got uh, you got Ben Arthur's been mentioned. It is, isn't it? It's Hatton Ben Arthur. Well done, Mick. <laughs> well done, Mick. Good knowledge. Good knowledge. Good knowledge. Absolutely. Right. What's going on on the Sky page? I'm going to refresh this. Maybe, maybe oh, we've gone. <laughs> uh, Have no, we got anything? No, Have we got anything? No, there's nothing. There's nothing. Hang on. Fabrizio Romano. Let's refresh this. See, see if there's anything interesting going on there. Oh, oh, hello. Villarreal have an agreement in place with Tottenham for Giovanni Lo Celso. Um, that's how I'm told it's pronounced, Lo Celso. Um, final details now discussed on player and contract side. Unai Emery is push, pushing to have Gio. Once Villarreal resolve their list problems, the two clubs will sign the contracts. There you go. If anyone's interested, there you go. Right. Do you want another one? Yeah, good. And then, then I've got another one as well. Who, yeah. who is the only Premier League winner with a surname made entirely of Roman numerals? Who is the only... The only Premier, Premier League, League winner, winner with a surname made entirely of Roman numerals? Oh, I like this one. <laughs> so this is going to be I's, O's, V's, M's, X's. Hmm. <laughs> and don't Google it, please, guys. Come on. It's just a little bit of fun. It's just a little bit of fun. It's quite fun seeing sort of like everyone sort of putting in answers and going, is it this? Is okay. it that? Premier League winner. Premier Ooh, League Oh, now, Ken. Interesting. It's wrong. But Ken, good to shout. He's he's actually he's actually not a million miles away. Interestingly enough, In he's not a million right? miles away. Ah, now that's as much information as you're getting out of me. All I'm saying is that Jason Park yeah, yeah. is not a million miles away from what is the right answer. But whether it's because he's South Korean or whether it's because he played for a team. Uh, Mitch is asking again, what was the question? The question was, Mitch, uh, which Premier League winner, um, which is, who is the only Premier League winner with a surname made entirely of Roman numerals? <laughs> and Kent's gone Park Ji Sun, and I said that's not a million miles away, but whether it's because he's... Um, South Korean or that part of the world, Asia. Um, Spencer seems to think that it's it's someone that's Asian. I couldn't possibly comment. Um, could it be a Man United player? You'll have to make your own 
judgment on that, Steve? I like I say, I'm I'm just having a little bit of fun because if if I if we just concentrate on transfer business for West Ham, there's not an awful lot of fun there. <laughs> it has to be said. No, it's right. Yeah. Oh, now here we go. This was a minute ago. Just to sort of go back on the transfer. This is not West Ham related, but just transfer news. Everton and Tottenham are in talks about a permanent deal for Delhi Alley. Discussions are at an early stage with a long way to go. Talks involve Daniel Levy and Fabrizio Paratici. Everton cannot loan another player from the Premier League once they have got Donny van der Beek from Manchester United. Ooh. Only two domestic loans are available under the rules and they signed Anwar El Ghazi on loan from Aston Villa as part of the Luca Dinia deal earlier this month. So it would need to be a permanent signing. Interesting. Very interesting. I think he'd be a good I think I think I think Lampard would be a good manager for for Delhi Alley. I think he'd be a good fit. I really do. I think he's a good player. I think he's Oh hang on, we got someone with the right answer. Yep, Vidic. Hey. Nemanja Vidic. Hey. Um, and in case yeah. you're wondering, V is five, I is one, D is five hundred, and C is one hundred. <laughs> it was hard. It was hard, but you've now got the answer. Um you got one for us, Duke? Oh Kazak. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, where is it? Where's it gone? I've lost it. Ah, which player? Yep. You're going to know this because you're just full of absolute bollocks. Who is the <laughs> only player to, to have played? Yeah, exactly. Who is the only player to have played in the World Cup? Yep. You know, didn't you? You know where I'm going with this, and you've already know the Come answer. On, I, I just know. Spit it out. Spit it out. World Cup, Champions League, UEFA Cup, into Toto Cup, all four levels of the English League football pyramid and the football conference. Steve Finnan. You know what? No. Told you, so, didn't I? I knew. I knew you'd know. We can edit that bit out. They'll never know. My wife right, says then. that as well, Mitch. I've got you here. Which footballer? <laughs> I was, Mitch. I was so proud, and he's a freak. But I'm proud of this one. Go Let's on, see if any of you on. lot out there in the world can get it. Hit Which footballer has played for the most London clubs? Which mm. footballer has played for the most London clubs? Are we talking pre or Premier English League League. era? English no, no, League. I'm saying is this Premier League era or before? Well, we've got a couple of answers already been fired in. That's they're not bad shouts because he played for a lot. You know what? I can't fucking deal with this. I'm not even bothering with questions anymore. Everyone's just like, yeah, I've that. I've that. Yeah, I've that. Look, they, yeah, they all it. got it. They Fuck all them. got it. They they Fuck all them. I'm got not playing it. anymore. I'm not playing anymore, bollocks dear. Bloody hell. Listen, I'll tell you what, there actually there's some knowledge of people right, out there. How many? Uh well he start did he go he was at QPR, Crystal Palace, Arsenal. Tottenham, Chelsea, West Ham. Who else? Did he play for anyone else in London? Or is that it? I don't know. That's a lot of clubs. Played for seven. Did he play for Millwall at any point? I've got a, did, he, did he play for Millwall? He played for QPR, Arsenal, Palace. Yeah. Tottenham... Chelsea, West Ham, and Millwall. He did go to Millwall. Yeah, I thought he did. He left us to go to Millwall. He played 12 times of that scoring. And then went to Carlisle for three games. He started his career with QPR, went to Arsenal. Didn't Ooh. make his first team appearance. 
Aaron Ramsey is here. I'm looking at a photograph of him in a Rangers shirt. It's a done deal. Aaron Ramsey has gone to Rangers. Uh, right. Good luck Who's to him. He'll, he'll, he'll probably do Aubameyang. all right there. Aubameyang hmm? is in Barcelona. Yeah. Barcelona. He is. Here's a question for you. Again, don't Google it. It's it's just for fun. Um, who was the first World Cup? Sorry. Who was the first world and European champion at both club and international level? At uh, what? The first world and European champion for both club and country. Are we talking Champions League? Or are uh, we talking European Cup? Just just first year, Worlds and European champion at both club and international level. Yeah, but, okay, so that could either be... Then if I, if I won the Europa... Europa League or the European Cup this cup that would I would be a European champion. No 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 the the, the European Cup. So the top tier European competition. Yeah yeah yeah. 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 Winner winner of the of of the world essentially the World Cup, the World Cup and the World Club Cup and the European Cup and the European Championships. Uh good guess Spence, the Kaiser, Franz Beckenbauer. Sadly, wrong. Would it be my, my would it be my German hero? What Matthias? Mm. No, it wasn't. And Luke has gone for Zinedine Zidane. It wasn't Zinedine Zidane, who was the first. There may have been others that have done it subsequently, and I've got a funny feeling Zidane has done it. But this guy was the first. How far back we are we going back significant? No, I mean, um, that would have been sort of late nineties, early two thousands. So okay, actually, cool. actually, that isn't a million miles away from the person who it is. Not Pele, not Vola. Blanc. Laurent Blanc? Nope. Mm. Pull it. Van Basten. Nope. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll give you give you guys a bit of a clue. Between him starting this process and completing the process, he did it between 1998 and 2001. So not the era, the not Deschamps, not Turam. And as I say, there may have been other people that have done it since, but he completed this particular um, accolade in 2001, and he was the first guy to do it. Bartes. Nope. Yeah, Luke's gone Bartes, hey, it's not, not Bartes. It's not Bartes. Well, can I? Right, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you, I'll give you a bit more uh, meat on the bones, as, as we say, right? He won the Champions League final um, and Intercontinental Cup um, with two, in 2001 with Bayern Munich after lifting the World Cup in 1998 and the European Championship in 2000. Trezeguet, no. Seydorf, no. So then, well, I'm guessing we're going down the, the, the French route, are we? Well, as I say, he lifted the World Cup yeah. in 98. Ah, there we go. That's the one. Vicente Lizarazu. Right. Yep. There you go. As I say, he, he won the Champions League and the Intercontinental Cup in 2001 with Bayern Munich and he this came after he lifted the World Cup and in 98 and the European Championships 2000 for France I think Zidane has done it since but he was the first 
There you go. Right. What's going on in the world of transfers? So, so we know that Aaron Ramsey has gone to Rangers. It's a loan with an option to buy. Uh, what else? I don't think there's anything else that's really broken in the last couple of minutes. It's all gone a little bit. A little bit stale, a little bit slow. There's clubs that are trying to get deals done, but it's like you've had the previous 30 odd days to sort this crap out. Why are you doing it now, honestly? Um, although here's one. Uh, this is Bruno Jordao has completed a loan move from Wolves to Grasshoppers. Oh. There you go. 23 year old midfielder. Uh, he'd recently returned to playing after a year-long knee injury after regaining fitness with Wolves' under-23 side. Good luck to him. Fair enough. So, Mitch is saying, well done, Luke. He got the he got the right answer. Um, he, he got there eventually. <laughs> Even the stop clock is How right many? twice a day. Go on. How many how many Bermudan players have played in the Premier League? Well, straight away I can think of one. And that's Sean Gota. So I'm gonna say one. Because I can't think of any others. Is it one? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Uh how about bad isn't it in your opinion if we don't sign anyone? In terms of us trying to achieve any any sort of relative success, Steve, very bad. Um, Collins John, was he a Bermudan? He wasn't. Okay. Have you got uh, the list of names? Uh, I do, yes. Okay. Are we talking double figures? You know, you know, you're talking uh, one played. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, uh, I'm not going to tell you who they played for because that'll tell you how many players there were. <laughs> uh, well, Sean Goat was players. one, wasn't he? Yes, yes, Sean Goat was yeah. one. Yes, feed the goat and he will score. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, hello, Steve's come with a counter question. Who was the first Bermudan player to play in the top flight of English I know the football? answer to that because it's on my phone. <laughs> Clyde Best oh. wasn't Bermudan, was he? He was, yes. Was it Clyde Best, Steve? My, my dad's favourite player. My dad's favourite West Ham player. Clyde yeah. Nick, Neil's just gone Clyde Best. Um, um, actually, this is Premier League era, so I was... I was, this is, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you who the other one is, mate. I really couldn't. I don't know if anyone in the live chat is. Um, there were three. three. Okay. There have been three. One played for Coventry in 97 98. Sean Gota played for Manchester City in 2000 and 2001, 2002, 2003. And then there was one that played for Burnley in 2017, 2018. Oh, bloody hell. So you have Carl oh, Lightborn, played for who? Coventry, he was Bermudan. And you had Naki Wells, who oh. played for Burnley. Mm. Yeah. No, he was he was Zimbabwean Undlove, wasn't he, Peter Undlove? He was Zimbabwean. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Hmm. Okay. Shall I get another one? Here's one for you. Yeah, go on. Uh, I'm just. I'm just going to keep going with the. Uh, they they, they in, ni- in this country. In 1967, <laughs> three English football teams played domestic football in the United States of America. Name them. Right. Start again. I think there are three. There are three teams who, in 1967 played domestic football in the United States. Name them. They actually played league football in the United States. Three English teams. In 1967, this happened. They must have played against each other, as you will end up with four. So. Basically, I'll tell you, I'll give you the backstory. 
It was the newly formed United St- United Soccer Association who lifted whole teams from Europe and implanted them into America. Um, and these three teams were given different names. Uh, and uh, one of the teams ended up um, winning the league, the one and only season they played in it. But who were the three teams? Well, you fucking found me now. I just thought it was... No, oh, OK. Yeah, no, there's three teams that went and played in 67 and played in a league competition in the United States. And one of the teams actually won it. Steve's gone Villa, Sunderland and QPR. I'll tell you what, he's got one out of the three right. Sunderland is one of the answers. I'm just enjoying Luke. (laughs) South Seattle on sea or Miami Middlesbrough. Miami Middlesbrough. (laughs) <laughs> well, Sunderland um, were actually renamed the Vancouver Royals for reasons best known to themselves. The Vancouver Royals. Oh, fuck me. Gatesy, have you got a strike go on? I have. What's going on with Ian Holloway, mate? He looks a bit rough, doesn't he? Has he... Um... Has he been that sort of knocking like back that. sort of like a bit too much of the old um I don't know, mate. I think there might fuel. be I think there might be some serious health issue there. Yeah, he don't he don't look right. I hope I hope I'm wrong, but he don't look he don't look in great shape. Poor lad. Uh well Steve's gone Newcastle. No. Tampa Bay Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, we got Sunderland, who were renamed the Vancouver Royals. And if I Newcastle told you, Middlesbrough. Uh, Newcastle and Middlesbrough. All from no. North, all three from no. the North East, no? No, no, it wasn't. No. Shall I give it to you? Yeah, go on. Okay. It was Wolves who were renamed who were renamed LA Wolves and they actually won it. Oh, well. This particular tournament, uh league, whatever. And Stoke City, who were renamed the Cleveland Stokers. <laughs> <laughs> Mad, isn't it? There was a lot of effort put into that game, see, wasn't there? Jesus yeah. Christ. You got one for yeah. us? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go back to me. Uh, they came from this country. Really, I go quite enjoyed that. Yeah, why oh, there's not? There's a lot there. We won't do that. Oh, there's a lot there. We ain't doing that one. There's... Ah, me. Latvian. <laughs> How many Latvian players have played in the Premier League? Ooh. Again, I can only I can only think of one. Um, and if I've got it right, it was Marianne Pahars. You got one? <laughs> Quite possibly. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Um how many Latvian players have played in the Premier League? Yeah, he's he's gone Pahars, yeah. I got Pahars. Pahars is one, yes. Yeah. Mm, probably. Are we talking single figures again? We are, yeah. But not one. There's more not than one. Mariam. Okay. There is more. Yeah, yeah we've got that one, Steve. Yeah, we did a couple of that one a little bit earlier. Uh, oh, hang on. I'll tell you, what, we'll, we'll, I'll star that comment from Mitch because I've only just seen his... Um, his little question. We'll come back oh, to that. Yeah, we'll come back to that. I like that one. I've just seen it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Stepanov. We will have that one. I was just going to. Uh, he's in fact. He's just. He's just said. Um, he's just, literally just as I said. It left the word left my mouth. Was Igor Stepanov's Latvian? He was. Yes. Yes, he was indeed. I yes. had a vague recollection that he was that he was um, Latvian, but I can't think of any others. 
No idea. Okay. I don't know if anyone else in the in the live chat has got any clue other than Stepanovs and Murray and Pahars, but I'm going to go two because I can't think of any others. No, I'll it's give more it than two, isn't it? Twenty seconds. It is, but I'll give you more than thirty seconds. Anyone in the chat want to have another guest on Gate Two? It's a fun way to spend the afternoon, isn't it? Hey. Not much going on as far as the transfer hoping. is concerned for a West Ham fan. Just yeah. hoping. Uh, right. Oh, hello. Six minutes ago, Deli Alley is a done deal as far as Everton's concerned. Full I'm agreement sure reached with Tottenham, on, permanent sorry, move no. subject to medical. It's done. Oh, yeah. Good. And another one, Romain Favre has joined Olympic Lyonnais on a permanent move from Brest. There you go. Can't beat a bit of Brest. So he did. Was that was that the eight? Was that the eight one or the six nil game? Because they they got or eight two, whatever it was. They well, got smashed a couple of times at Old Trafford Arsenal. Well, Stepanov's not the one that Merson said in in an interview where him and someone else were taking the piss, saying, oh, he's banging, he's banging, he's banging, and he was absolutely shocking. And then they signed him. He walks into the changing room, so they were like, what are you doing here? And oh, I've just joined on a permanent. And they're like, what the f-? Because he was absolutely <laughs> shocking. I, you, I'm pretty sure it was Merson that gave the interview. They were taking the piss on the bench, saying that like, he was reading the game really well and absolutely ripping into it, like, just absolutely yeah. taking the piss. And I think it was, was it George Graham? George uh, whoever, Graham. It was that signed, whoever it was that signed him, it might not have even been Stepanovs, but they were taking the piss and he ended up rocking up. Um, and then, uh, it was mentioned in the thing that by Merson that he played in the game at Old Trafford when it was like, not, was it eight or seven or eight minutes or something? Yeah, something like that. they got absolutely smashed. Um, anyway... It was five. Go on. Who's the other three? Uh, Bladilis. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Okay. Imans Bally... Bla, bla, yeah, him. He played for Southampton in 2000. He's you to say. Uh, Stolzers. Andreas Stolzers. Was at Fulham. Fulham, yes. You know, one oh three. Mm-hmm. You've got Stepanov, you've got Pahas, and then you had the Reading player who played what position? He was a defender. Mm-hmm. He played for he played for Blackpool QPR. Then he went to Reading, and he played eighty-one times for Reading. Also went out on loan to Wolves for fifteen games. Kaspar score. Got it. Have okay. Yeah. Should, we, should we go back to uh, Bitchy's one? Three yeah, players right shared the Premier League Golden yeah. Boot in 2018-19. So I'm I'm going to suggest Harry Kane, Jamie Vardy, and Mo Salah. Yeah, I was, I was about to say Salah. Help us out, Mitch. Have I got any of those three right? Uh, what happens if Antonio gets a bad injury against Costa? Yeah, I know. That is the doomsday scenario, isn't it, Ian? And that's why we're oh, just keeping our fingers crossed that he, he comes back in good shape. Uh, that would just be absolutely just typical. That would be, be typical West Ham. Yeah, exactly. I've got a funny feeling. Oh, which which one, Mitch? Come on, help me out. Come on, is it? Is it? <laughs> you know, come on, just just. You know, Who won which the one? league? Who won the league that year? 2019. That was City. Yeah. Aguero. Well, no, Ian's gone. Not. Aubameyang, Salah, Kane. Salah was correct. Cheers, cheers, Mitch. Um, so we know that Kane's not in it because you had Kane in yours, and yet who else did you have? Okay, see Vardy. So we know Vardy and 
Buddy and Kane are out. So Alba ain't a bad shout. Alba, Alba, Salah and Aguero, Mitch? Mm, who else? Who was Chelsea strike around that time? So Alba and... So Alba's out. Was Lukaku still around? No, I don't think he... Was he had he left by then? Alba's out. Kane's out. Vardy's out. Is that mine, Mitch? So then we rule out Aguero. So. Alba's one, right. So Alba, so you've got Alba. So Aubameyang, Salah. And Salah. And not, not Sadio Mane. He wasn't, he wasn't golden boot, was he? I don't think he was. Uh. Jesus, Aguero, Sterling. Uh, Aguero, Aguero's out. Raheem Sterling. Oh, she's gone. Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, Can't. Oh, hang on. Mitch has gone. Some. Who's correct? Is it Sterling. Jesus. Is it Sterling. Man A. I got it. Man A. There you go. I like that. I like that. I like that. Got there. Got there in the end. Uh, hang on. Get rid of that. So. Oh, I've got one for you. Go on. It might fuck a few people up. I'm gonna enjoy this. Why? There has only been one player from the Philippines that has played in the Premier League. He played in the Premier League in 2018, 2019. Who was it? Repeat the question, please. Hmm? Could you repeat the question, please? One player from the Philippines who have played in the Premier League. I know the answer to this, but do you want me to blurt it out or do you want me to put it in the live in the in the private chat? Hold on chat? for a minute. Hold okay, yeah, let me put just... it in the private chat and put it in the private chat and see if anyone there can get it. One Philippine Island player. It's in a, in a private chat. Is it him? Melda Marcos, it was Gaethje, yes. It's bad, isn't it? <laughs> I'm saying nothing. He I'm still plays. Nothing. He still he plays is. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's. I mean, don't forget, and I, I, I don't want to say he's only too thirty-one. Much because, well, so yeah, he's that's, still. That's, when, when, when you know who it is, you'll you'll realise why that's actually not that big a deal. But how many pairs of shoes? Oh, mate, legendary. A ridiculous amount of shoes she had. That was just something unbelievable. She had more shoes than Clark's. Ah, uh, here we go. Tangy on Dombele is joined Olympic Lyonnais on loan. Uh, uh, sorry? including a buy option, but it's not mandatory for 65 million euros. So they're getting it. I'm not being funny for a guy that's gone to Tottenham, and, and I think most people would say he's been a maybe not a failure, but certainly a disappointment at the, at the very least. And they're getting back a fair amount of the money that they, they paid for him. Say what you want about Daniel Levy, but he knows how to negotiate. Well, Spencer went Manny Pacquiao, but Mitch got it. Sorry, sorry, I've got my my CCTV police security radio blaring in the background. I put you on mute. Sorry, they're talking about someone nicking from Poundland of all fucking places. Oh dear, Mitch got it. It was near Lethbridge. It was, yeah, yeah, he, and yes, still playing. Still playing. First and only Filipino. Right, here's one for you. This will test you. Okay. <clears throat> Pre-Champions League. Okay. So prior to the Champions League coming into, into being, which, right. who was the only country to produce two cities with two clubs that reached the European Cup semi-final? Which the only country 
pre-Champions League to produce two cities with two clubs that reached the European Cup semi-final. So I don't want the city, I don't want the clubs, I want the country. Italy. Nope. <clears throat> so the Champions League first came into being in, what, 92, if I remember correctly? That was the first edition of the Champions League. So it's pre-1992, and it's a country, the only country, the only country to produce two cities with two clubs that reached the European Cup semi-finals. Oh, you sod. Oh, really? Yeah, it was Scotland. It was Scotland. Oh, um it was uh, Rangers reached the final four of the 1960 European Cup, um, whilst Celtic won the competition in 67. And Dundee were beaten semi finalists in 63, and Dundee United um, got to the semis in 1984. Mm. Scotland. Interesting. There you go. You got another one for us, old chap? You want my old chat, Mr. Road? Behave. Oh, sorry. oh, hello. Luke's got a good... Oh, wow. Well, before you do, have a look at that one. Russians arrived 12 days late for the 1908 London Olympics. Why? It's got to be do something to do with transportation or something. Isn't it? It's got to be do something Thank to do with... Ah, uh, did they try? Did they? Mm. Well, Luke, uh, Andy says, did they with, walk? Would it be anything to do with the? Is it the, the Baltic Strait being frozen over, or they went the wrong way? <laughs> they went Bering Straits yeah, frozen yeah, over, Bering says Steve. Frozen over there, I see. Um, and uh, yeah, they went the wrong way. Was it indeed? Architecture was an Olympic sport until 1954. Well, that's interesting, Hammerhead. I'll tell you what. This, Luke this says is no. Certainly, this is certainly it's, this is meant to be a transfer deadline down. We're, we're playing we're just, mastermind. Like we're just day. chatting shit amongst ourselves. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. I love it. Yeah, why not? I love it. Um, the Russians arrived 12 days late for the 1908 London Olympics. Why? They couldn't get an Uber? Them, went to the wrong country? It's going to be something really daft, isn't it, like that? They were frozen in? Um... I don't think it was anything to do with Vladimir Putin declaring war on Ukraine or anything. No, that'll be 2054. <laughs> oh, you are joking. What? <laughs> and Neil said the same thing. They were using a different calendar. <laughs> oh, will she? Will she? No, not quite. Not quite. Will she be able to? Go on, Luke, you're going to have to elaborate. What do you mean they were using the wrong calendar? What, it was sold to them by Del Boy or something? Hmm. Well, give us a little bit more, more context. There, there must be... Must be a little bit more in that. I'm I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Let's just go back to Fabrizio Romano on Twitter. See if there's anything else. He's saying that Deli Alley's done. Uh, but despite the sale of Deli Alley to Everton on a permanent deal, um, Tottenham are not going to bid for Douglas Louise. And Arsenal are no longer in the race. So he will stay at Aston Villa. Interesting. So, Deli Alley going to a club that have had their manager in harness for a day and they've made more signings than me we've made. Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> we switched to Gregorian calendar and they didn't. Oh, wow. 
That is brilliant. That you you're going to have to put that in one of your pub quizzes, aren't That's you? Crazy, isn't it? That is going in one of your pub quizzes. It has to. I might have to. Uh, what I want to know is why. No, what you're not here for it. Doing architecture to complete. Like, what would they have to show or build? Yeah, I, I, um, yeah, we discussed this earlier, Hammerhead. I mean, would he fit stylistically? Fantastic player on his day, but I, I do wonder with his attitude. I, I'm just not sure. I've heard sort of stories about him. I mean, Mourinho, one of the first things he, is, he said to him was that he was a lazy person. So, not too sure that would be something that Moyes would tolerate. Um, yeah, we've we've already done that one um, about 10 minutes ago, Hammerhead. But, um, yeah, he's uh, he's gone to uh, Olympic Lyonnais, wasn't it? Has he gone back to Olympic? Did I say that? Hang on. Uh, yeah, on loan. On loan. Got not an obligation to buy. Yep. Who am I? Oh. Are you ready? Yes. No, I know that one. Yes. I knew that one. What could have happened to Blackburn? What Nothing. could have happened to Blackburn? Would have fucking ruined it. I mean, <laughs> no That's it. fine, Hammerhead. Don't worry. We'll let you off. We'll be but that is. Somewhere. That is a sort of real. I say what what he could have done in in Blackburn. They could have won the Premier League again. Who knows? Andy, the player with the most tries in international rugby wow. league represented which nation? Japan, if I remember correctly. Come back at me, Luke. Was it Japan? All right, I've got a question. Go for it. Who am I? I am the only player to have done the following. And Rob, you already know. Look at you. Fuck it. No, no, I'm just, just making sure Are that I, because Hammer said that so I look quite, you know. I'm getting a few comments today. Oh, thank you, Andy. Just, I got you. Okay, who am I? I'm the only player to have done the following. And I reckon, Gates, yep. you're going to know because you're a dick. <laughs> I scored in the Premier League. Yep. The Championship. Okay. League One, League Two, and the Conference. Yeah. And the only player to have done those alongside the FA Cup, the League Cup, the Football League Trophy, the FA Trophy, the Champions League, the Europa League, the Scottish Prem, the Scottish Cup, and the Scottish League Cup. I'm the only player to have scored in the Premier League, the Championship, Leagues 1 and 2, the Conference, the FA Cup, the League Cup, the Football League Trophy, the FA Trophy, Champions League, Europa League, Scottish Prem and both Scottish Cups. Well, it's not Vardy because he's never played in Scotland, has he? Apparently, this is one of the hardest sports questions that there is. And I thought, fuck I, it. Uh, if you're if you're referring to Robert Earnshaw, I thought that, but I don't think he's played in Scotland, does he? Is it Robert Earnshaw? No. Right. Okay. Because when you started saying it, I was thinking that sounds like Ernie, but then it was like, no, hang on. Uh, Hammerhead's <laughs> gone Don Bele. No. Oh. I was going to say, because I don't think he'd have played in, in uh, the conference. Bloody hell, this is a good one. No, I don't, I don't know the answer to this one, Duke. I do not know the answer to this one. So, all four, tier, all four tiers of league English football and, not, and, and the conference, essentially. Yep. FA Cup, League Cup, Football League Trophy, Scottish Premiership, Scottish Cup, Scottish League Cup, Champions League. Oh, hang on. No. Oh. Died his career in 2003. Oh. Okay. 
And did he start his career north or south of the border? South. Quite local to you, actually. Well, I say local. That's understandable. God. Would you like me to give the, give you the teams that he played for? Go for it. Began his career at Gray's Athletic. Right. Moved to Southend United. Okay. Went to Leighton Orient on loan. Went to Hereford on loan. Yeah. Went to Scunthorpe United. Right. Then spent three years north of the border with Celtic. Okay. Came back down south and joined Norwich. Went on loan to Sheffield Wednesday and then joined them permanently before he left for pastures new on the other side of the world. You're going to say it and I'm going to go, oh, yeah, him. I know it. Played for Celtic between 2010 and 2013. Oh, Jesus. 95 no. goal, 95 games, 63 goals. That is a fucking impressive return. Grant so, Holt? No. I thought that I thought that might be where you go when it went Celtic and Norwich. Did Grant, Grant Holt play for Celtic? I don't know. That's kind of where my brain is. I know went. he played for Norwich, but... Did you know he got into, into pro wrestling for a bit? He did. Fact, I don't know, he may, he may still be doing it. One minute he's scoring goals for Norwich in the Premier League and then he's delivering suplexes. Crazy. Oh, Aubameyang to Barcelona's in doubt. It looks well, like yeah, the, Someone uh... put in the chat earlier that Arsenal said that they were surprised he rocked up in Barcelona. He's, he's, had, uh... a, he's had a, what's his name? Odin Winky moment. Was it Odin Wingy that rocked up? Ah, uh, it from, says it? here it is thought Aubameyang flew to Barcelona to visit family and did not have a meeting with club officials. Discussions Ooh. between the clubs had centered around the percentage of Aubameyang's wages that Barcelona would pay. Aubameyang had made financial sacrifices to try and get the deal done. Now that doesn't make sense, right? It's so it says he he'd made financial sacrifices to try and get the deal done, but it also says that he went to Barcelona to visit family and didn't have meetings with club officials. So, which, both those statements can't be true, sure, surely. Gary Hooper says, Kent. There you go. There you go. The he knows font of all knowledge. Yeah. I knew, I knew when someone said it, I'd go, oh, yeah, him. He actually scored in the Conference National and the Conference South. So you can Did actually he? say both levels of the conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good knowledge. Well done, Kent. Knew I could count on you to dig me out of a hole. Do you want another one? Never played, never, never, never represented England, though. He's English by, by uh, he, he, in fact, he's Who? eligible. Who? is the only player to be sent off in the World Cup finals on his birthday. Fucking hell. I was about to go, but no. The only player to be sent off at the World Cup finals, as in the tournament, not the final, um, on his birthday. You'll be there all day. Trust you for that one. Be out yourself, will you? No, it wasn't Ray Wilkins, mate. It wasn't Ray Wilkins, Steve. He's not English. It wasn't someone that's English. Although, he does have a very big connection with the English game. He's someone that when Thanks I say his not. name, you're going to go, yes, I know exactly who that is. Because, oh, Hammerhead! He got it. I thought that might take a little bit more, little more time, but he knew it. 
he knew it. It was Gianfranco Zola. He got sent off, um, I think it was against Nigeria, if I remember rightly. I'm sure it was Nigeria he got sent off against. But yeah, he got sent off on his birthday, so not the card he wanted to see. <laughs> so. All right, then. Luke, tell me why, please. I'm now, I really need to know. I really, I, I'm, I'm now kind of, I need to know. 162,719 pints of Guinness were lost to something every year. Um, evaporation? I don't know. Uh, he, he heard he heard Franco talking about it on Sky. That's how he knew. <laughs> Mustaches? <laughs> no. No. That's ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah, uh, probably the way we're going, Brookband 73, we probably, that's probably who we're going to end up with. Boris. Johnson. Dr. Leg has, yes. Then there's someone. Official and confirmed. Oh, you'll like this one, Doke. Guess who's joined Juventus on a permanent move from Borussia Mönchengladbach? Who do you think? Mr. Kari, on it? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's not a ridiculous amount of money. 5 million euros plus 3 million euros add-ons. Is that a contract hell. in the summer? So, yeah. Crazy, crazy. crazy. The crack is uh, me up. Oh, uh, God, and who has won the most sports personality Dr. in the Leg, year? Dr. What, Leonard, the actor, Leonard Fenton? Is he, yeah, yeah, he's very fast by. Yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I mean, he he must have been well into his 90s, I think. I think he was 95, was he? Good, a good knock. And hopefully he had a good good life. And uh, we all must go at some point. Um, here's a good one for you. Yeah, um, the last Welsh speaker to score a goal at the old Wembley Stadium. Who is it? The last Welsh speaker to score a goal. At the old Wembley Stadium. Uh, yeah. And I tell you what, if I'm you guess this, you, well. you, if if you guess this, then you've Googled it. <laughs> well, I'm not. Steve, so we mate. That's why we're sitting there doing quizzes. Yeah, we've kind of given up on us signing Jesse Lingard or Jonathan David. We're just sort of like. We, I'm keeping an eye on things, but as as Duke is, but it's like it's, it's lots of things that are going on at other clubs, like Leon signing on Don on loan or Valt Vegel yeah, going to Burnley. Yes, mate. It's not that one, is it? Oh, you googled that. You googled that, Mister Luke. <laughs> But, but, yeah, it's, I say that, I probably should put an asterisk to say, rumour has it. Rumour has it. So, and there's also a story um, that Haintsay, Gabrielle Haintsay also, because apparently there's um, a Welsh population that buggered off to um, Patagonia. There was a Welsh settlement in, in Patagonia, and apparently... Um, they reckon that Pat Gabrielle Batistuta, so the story goal, spoke Welsh. But there's also a, another story that says so did Gabrielle Ainsay. So, whatever. <laughs> you got another one, mate? Hang on a minute. I'm just listening to Super Drunk say about something. Hang on. Oh, hello. Woolly hat, white, woolly hat, white jacket. A woolly hat, white jacket. What is this? The the, the low life that's been nicking from Powerland. No, this one. This one's. Oh yeah, that's some fair comment. Why are you not stopping him, super drunk? Why are you letting him walk out the door? That's just an absolutely outstanding comment from the police there. I like that one. 
So is this a live yeah. sort of thing you've got to the old bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's a safe Lewisham uh, setup that was never used before I got here for some reason. They paid like sixty pound a year, be or sixty pound a month, or something. Oh, hang on. What description, please? Woolly, uh, woolly, woolly out white jacket. Yeah. Have a young jacket now. And white jeans. <laughs> oh. Dan Burns agreed personal terms ahead of his move to Newcastle. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I tried to stop him and he ran away. Well, chasing would be like just an idea. I can't, I can't keep up. Oh, anyway, go on silent. Let's get back to this. Yeah, so Dan Burns agreed personal terms. It looks like he's moved to Newcastle. He's Again, pretty much done. 30 uh, million quid. I mean, that ain't a bad shout. Yeah. And it looks like Delhi Alley is inching ever closer to being confirmed as an Everton player. Although I've heard it from Fabrizio Romano. He says that it is done. So make of that as yeah, you see fit. Yeah, I'm just having a quick... Let's just have a quick Boucher's on, on the old... Here's one. Here's one for you. Go on then, we got? Name me the only two footballers to have scored penalties in the Premier League with both feet. What, at the same time? As no, 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 no. No, no, oh. no, no. A left-footed penalty and a right-footed penalty. <laughs> there are only two players that have ever done it in Premier League football. Who are they? You've got to be a confident player to, to run the risk. Oh, I'd, I'd say they were both fairly sure of themselves. Uh, no, it's not. It's not those two. Good shout. But it's neither of those. The only two footballers to have scored penalties with their right and left foot in the Premier League. And one of them, one of them played for West Ham. One of them played for West Ham. Although I don't ever remember him taking a penalty for us, interestingly enough. Ah, so he did right. You've got to stick a caveat in there. I don't remember him sticking a, scoring a penalty for us. That's all I'm saying. He might have done, um, but I don't remember him scoring a penalty for us. Oh, hello. Hello. Old Clever Clogs has got it. He's got one of them anyway. Yes, Zamora. Good afternoon, Russ. Hope you are well. Afternoon, Russ. We're so bored with uh, with our uh, with our transfer yeah, deadline day. We're just going we're on. Being crazy, mate. It's, it's, we're just yeah. sort of poodling along. Well, Steve's gone Ibrahimovic and Ronaldo. Well, as I say, one of them's actually Bobby Zamora. Uh, Di Canio, no. Tevez, no. Uh, yes, he's got the other one. Obafemi Martins is the other one. Oh, really? Yeah. Obafemi Martins and Bobby Zamora, the only two Premier League players to have scored with both their right and their left foot. There you go. You've got another one for us, have you? Oh. We are that bored. It's ridiculous. <laughs> He's looking. Oh, hello. No, hang on. Luke's coming with one. In 1906, what innovation was added to basketball? I'm going to guess it wasn't the ball. The hoop or the net. It's one the of them. Hoop. I'm going to go the backboard. I don't know bugger all about basketball. Um, we could do. We, In fact, I've done it before. Might do that for a bit later. Yeah. I was thinking about doing one about with about my specialist subject, fools and horses. Pick some of them. Them. Sorry. It's just a picture of Wes Morgan lifting the trophy up on. Tra uh, on when he was at left. I was just wondering if anyone was signing him. <laughs> oh, he retired at the end of last season. Don't tell me he's oh, coming he out of retirement. Are we nothing. going to sign him? Might be going to Sunderland. He might be going to Sunderland with Jermaine Defoe. No. 
goodness. I don't know. I'm just asking. I don't know. I didn't say it did, did I? There. Oh, this is right now. Hugo Ekatike's proposed move from Reims to Newcastle looks off. There was late interest in Ekatike from Borussia Dortmund and Paris Saint Germain, and the player wants to stay at Reims and reassess his options in the summer. Hmm. Now give me an option now. Sky Sports has been told that Newcastle's offer came in late last night. So there you go. Get your deals done early. Jesus. Zakaria, just to put it, because I gave the, the sort of figures in euros, um, in pound sterling, 4.2 million up front, 2.5 million in bonuses attached to the deal. Good God. Cheap as chips, isn't it? Embarrassing. Oh, embarrassing that we're not even trying. Is no a hole in the bottom of the net to let the so they just yeah. had a who's that to poke it out? No, the person who invented basketball was from which country? Swaziland. I mean, the obvious answer is the States, so I'm guessing it's not the States. Zimbabwe. Uh, I'll go... I'm going to go Wales for no fathomable reason. Wales. Was it Wales, Walshie? Oh, hang on. Canadania. Fair enough. There you go. There you go. I'll find another one. I'll find another one. Here we go. Which player was involved in both games that used silver goal? Do you remember golden goal? Mm -hmm. And do you remember silver goal, which was the next evolution? No. Okay. We well, you know golden goal was basically okay. basically essentially next goal wins. Yeah. Well, silver goal was you score a goal and we carry on to the conclusion of that half essentially. All right. Well, there was there was it was only ever used silver goal was only ever used twice. Um, it once in club football um, in the Ch a Champions League qualifier. And the other time was the Euro 2004 semi-final. And one player was involved in both matches. Who was it? Uh, Laurent Blanc. Laurent Blanc. Nope. No, that was that was a golden goal, Steve. That was golden goal, not silver goal. Golden goal was essentially next goal wins. Same happened in um, Euro 96, didn't it? Because that was Oliver Bierhoff. Franco Baresi. <laughs> no, well, as I say, it was um, one of them was in the Euro 2004 semi-final. I don't care. Just the other one was a Champions League qualifier. Barthes. Nope. Turan. Nope. Oh, I've done them out. <laughs> I'd be surprised if anyone got this, to be honest with you. I'll put you all out of your misery. It was a guy called Thomas Galashek. He, oh, yeah, uh, he was a Czech Republic international. And he, he was involved in both games that were the only two games where they utilised silver goal. There you go. Oh, I've got one for you. Go for it. Where did Sir Alex Ferguson start out his managerial career? Oh, I've seen his thing on Amazon Prime. Was it something like Wraith Rovers or something like that? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, actually, just sort of like just just seeing Russ's comment there. I think he did. Come on, you lot. No, no, no. no yes, no, it was. It was a game between Ajax and Gratz. Good knowledge, Russ. Stone. Good knowledge. Stone crap. Yeah, no. Two boys in the chat. Luke and Steve. No and no. Mm. Trying to remember. It wasn't St. Johnston, was it? Nope. God, do you know the annoying thing is, is that like I say I, I saw the thing he did on um, Amazon Prime, and he and he referenced uh, no it. No, is the answer to uh, Andy and Luke there. Just come in with Peter another Ed, couple. Alawa. Inverness, Inverness Caledonian this no, I don't no. think it was. No. Oh God. Was it air? Nope. Because I know he obviously managed Aberdeen before he came down to um, Manchester United. Yeah. And there was a couple of clubs that he'd managed before that. I think he did manage St Mirren, but I think that wasn't his first club. Easy. <laughs> um. Oh, this is going to be Arbroath. Nope. No. Nope. Oh God. I'll give you another forty seconds. Bro. Oh goodness. Um. Stenhouse Muir. No. Cowden Beef. No. Sterling. No. Close. Ooh, close. East Sterling Shire. Yes. I prefer yeah. Andy's answer, though. No, Luke's answer. What, I am, I am Brew United. <laughs> Unitech. <laughs> East, East 5 4, 4 5, 5. Yes, you say that. What's... Is there anything going on in the world of transfers? Um, for uh, no, oh, apparently, definitely gone. this one about Ekatike new, to Newcastle off. Newcastle apparently were not happy with a sell on clause for a future 30% to rings. Wow, Jossie's Giants. I remember that, Jossie's Giants. Okay, here's one for you. Only three times has the world transfer record been broken by teams not from England, Italy, or Spain. So can you name me the other countries that were involved? Those those three countries. That broke the world transfer record. So only three times the world transfer record has been broken by teams not from Italy, England, or Spain. Now, one of them should be fairly easy because it's it was fairly recent that this one happened. Hey, Mr. Kennedy here. Sorry, hang on. Ooh. Mm. That is correct. One of them is Scotland. Uh, give me a second, Matt. I'll be back. Bear with. <laughs> and just just to sort of expand upon that um the one where a scottish team broke the world record actually involved us because it was when falkirk paid five thousand pounds for west ham's sid puddyfoot uh luke has gone scotland france and portugal now so obviously you've worked out the other one was Paris Saint-Germain for Neymar, which is the current record. Um, but Portugal, no, it's not Portugal. So you've got one country left. Uh, Walsh, uh, Steve's gone France, obviously. Yep, we've got that. Germany, no, it's not Germany. And it's not China, Mitch. It is not China. 
Um, Brook Bond, Brooke Bond 73 went France. Yes, that's correct. Uh, which player did we pay a world record fee? Uh, that would be Phil Parks. Uh, I think also Bobby Ferguson was a world record, wasn't he? I think. Um, but yeah, so you've got one country left, guys. Um, this this club, I'll, I'll give you a clue. It's in 90, it's, it's a little while ago, actually. It's 1932 this happened when this club paid a world record transfer fee. Um, and I'll give you another clue. It's not in Europe, but it's not China either. So there you go. You'll get it. You'll get it. I'm sure you will. It's not Europe. Right. Definitely not Wales. <laughs> uh, America. Hmm. Are we talking the continent? Uh, hold on. Mexico, no. Uruguay, no. Brazil, no. Argentina, bingo. Ten points. Uh, 1932, River Plate played £32,000 for Bernabe Ferreira. There you go. River Plate. So there. That's an interesting little piece of knowledge for you. Oh, I'll, got, I'll tell you what, I'll keep that one for when Duke comes back. He's probably going to apprehend someone. So, the Welsh Argentina. Oh, hey. How are we what doing? Oh, I've, 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 I did a question in your absence. They got it. Well, eventually. Oh, they got it. Okay. It wasn't going to be me getting it, let's be honest. I've just got no idea that, <laughs> Uh, honestly, this is this is one of the most painful transfer windows I can. It's Newcastle awful, and West Ham mate. pushing to sign Jesse Lingard on loan from Manchester United. We are not going to sign Jesse Lingard. I am fairly confident. Fairly confident Jesse Lingard is not coming to us. He could go to Newcastle. Don't see him coming to us. Hope I'm hope I'm proved wrong, but can't see it. Hold up. Which city was the first cricket test match in 1877? I'm going to guess Edinburgh. Steve's gone Leeds. How about you, Duke? First, which first city was the first day. cricket test match in 1877? I'm going to go with Neil. Neil, Neil sounds like he knows what he's talking about. He's I'm gone go Melbourne. Neil, I've, I've gone Edinburgh. He'll, he'll let us know. Let us know, Luke. Are any of us right? Edinburgh, Leeds, Melbourne. Oh, Neil's got it. It was Melbourne. <laughs> Hey, see, so I knew, I knew, I knew. Just have to rely. <laughs> well, she went Sydney. Where well, it's sort of similar. It's down that part of the world. Oh, there at Newcastle training ground. Let me see if I've mm, Yeah. So I'm just watching it as well. It's Where's just the waffling on. Um, and it's decided to oh. Newcastle. You really want to add... I was going to say, it's coming through, Duke. Honestly, this is a horrible transfer window for us. Oh, here's one. Official and confirmed, Rodrigo Betancourt joins Tottenham on a permanent deal statement confirms Juventus will receive 19 million euros plus 6 million euros add-ons. Uh, Boca Juniors will receive 30% of this deal. Well, there is a number again, 30%. Is that the standard sell-on fee? It must be. It, it depends on, I, I suppose... It just depends on what you're getting. Some of them, 
percentage sell on. Hmm. And some of them are a percentage of profit, some of them are for a percentage of sales. So you could be asking for 30% of you know 20 million quid, which is what you go on and selling for. Some of them might, and then you know, the, the generic one is 30 million, 30% 30 of whatever profit. If you bought in for 20 million and you sell it for 22, they're entitled to 30% of your 2 million rather than 30% of the 22 million. So it depends on how it's worded. But it, it, it does seem to be a generic um, inclusion these days in a lot of... Um... Yeah, it seems to be the norm of a lot of the, uh, the offers, really. Hmm. Oh, hello. Ian Botham famously played league football, but in what position? I'm going to go... I reckon he was a central midfielder, Luke. I reckon he was central mid. Uh, yeah, we apparently we were offered Barkley and Ali on loan, but knowing... Uh, Knowing the way that Daniel Levy does business, we'd have we'd have been tied up in all sorts of knots. Yeah, we we covered that one a little bit earlier, Mitch. Honestly, I I, I don't understand why we haven't gone in for him and Duke's, you know, in complete agreement. <sighs> Unbelievable centre back. Okay, yeah, because he was he was a fairly big lad, wasn't he? Let's let's be honest. Uh, he did. I think he also played for Yeovil. I've got a sneaking suspicion Ian Botham played for Yeovil as well as Scunthorpe. Um, if you want to Google it, guys, help yourself. Here's one for you. You ready, Duke? Yeah, go on. First World Cup hat-trick and first World Cup clean sheet um, was kept by which nationality? Both Both nationalities were the same. First player to score a World Cup hat trick and the first player to score to keep a World Cup clean sheet both represented the same country. Which country? Hungary. Wrong. Not Hungarian. Steve says Steve says it was England. Well, England didn't actually participate in their first World Cup until 20 years after the first edition. The answer to that question, therefore, is no, it's not England. France, it was not French either. They were not French. Uruguay. No. Luke's gone Italy. Nope. Brazil. Nope. Oh, Luke gets it again. American. He's on fire, the boy. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, just sort of uh, United States goalkeeper Jimmy Douglas managed the first clean sheet of the inaugural 1930 tournament in a 3-0 win against Belgium. Four days later... Bert Paternold scored three goals in another 3 0 win, this time against Paraguay. And he's honest enough to say it was a pure guess. But it was the right guess. It wasn't Uruguay, Walshy, or Argentina, Steve. It was the United States of America. Yeehaw! Easy. <laughs> I thought I did quite well. It was impressive. I'm not going to lie. This has got to be the worst window. This you know, has got to be the worst window. This is more a footballing fact than it is a question. But did you know that if you take a stick of celery into Stanford Bridge, you could get a lifetime ban? Yes. Madness. Yes, I did know that. I that that I did know. Fucking ridiculous if you ask me.
Hugo Akite, uh, off. We might go back in for another bid. 25 million. But again, I think you said Gatesy, he's kind of said he doesn't want to go anywhere. He's going to reevaluate. That's what you said, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I can't see that happening. Here's one. There are only two oh. clubs. There's only two clubs in England that don't have the geographical location of the team in their name. Who are they? Or a geographical location? Because of course, West Ham aren't no aren't in West Ham. West Ham are obviously in Stratford, but it's a geographical location. Yeah, there's only two clubs in England that don't have a geographical location um, in their team name. Who are they? Oh, he's got one of them. He's got one of them, Port Vale. Well, the other one should be fairly easy, actually. He'll probably work it out in a minute. You'll get Luke in the live chat and he'll go, Everton? No, it's not Everton. It's not Everton. Ah, uh, he's got the other one. It's Arsenal. I was about to say, he's, he's, yeah. 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 Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. We knew, you, we knew what you meant, Leo. We knew what you meant. There's not really an awful lot going on here. Why did we why did we do on the most boring transfer deadline day? Why did we do a stream? Oh yeah, you do have to question our, our, our sanity on this. It is a bit madness, isn't it? Leeds adamant England midfielder will not be sold in this transfer window. No shit, Sherlock. Leeds are Bournemouth. adamant is, uh, Bournemouth have signed half of the bottom half of the Premier League. Crazy, isn't it? I say the bottom half. I mean, Jesus, they've brought, they've brought in Nat Phillips. I mean, he's 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 not in the bottom half. Unbelievable. And they've had an Everton medical. Rangers have signed Poland under twenty one right back Mateusz Zukowski. From Easy Dan. for you to say. I thought so. I did well. Sounds like you could get some cream and some ointment from your doctors for that, but never mind. I've signed. Oh, so that's gone through now. Then, guys, you've seen that. It's definitely gone through now. Which one? Just come up as done deal. Bournemouth signed um, Nat Phillips. Crazy. They've got Crazy. him. They've got Freddie Woodman. And they've got Kiefer Moore as well for three and a half million. Tom Campbell has passed his medical. Yep. We've got six I, and a half okay. hours just over. Six and a half hours, and we're just... And I'm telling you now, right, and I I apologise for my use of my language, so I'm going to beat myself out. But if that beep tells me not to go to bed tonight, I'm going to lose my shit. Hmm. I'm yeah, sorry. Woolwich, Woolwich isn't in their name, Walshy. That's the point. Sorry. What's this? Verna to Fiorentina. I've not seen any of that shit. But you were a bit of a I'm, fan of his, weren't you? I really would. It's another one of them that I'm looking at going, what are we doing? What are we not doing? I'm getting... Well, I'm getting what are we doing? Well. Not an awful lot. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah there's that. Honestly. It's like death by a thousand cuts, this. Did you know, this is this is a did you know, Luka Modric and Mark Viduka are cousins. I didn't know that. No, I wouldn't have known that. No, why, I why, why, no why would that idea. be something you know? Hmm. 
So the Kulu Svesevsky. That's what? Done. Kulusevsky. Who? Uh, Dijan Kulusevsky. Okay. Spurs from Juve has been done. Ten million pound loan. Fuck off. Ten million euro loan fee for a year and a half. The Spurs have got an eighteen month loan deal. Fucking you know. hell. Sullivan's going to do his nut. Um, there is an obligation to buy for thirty-five million pound under certain conditions of the Champions League and appearances. Buy option clause is available for thirty-five million pound, and that thirty-five million euros. Sorry, and that thirty-five million euros can be pay, paid in five instalments. It sounds like David Sullivan is all over, all over that shit. Mm. Um, little Mo off of EastEnders. I think no, that's old. It's old Mo, isn't it? Um, Lay Layla Morse is uh, Gary Oldman's sister. Yeah, because little little Mo, Mo was uh, Casey Ainsworth, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Bloody EastEnders. Oh, they're off again. Oh, uh, someone else nicking from Poundland. Honestly. <laughs> Here's a question for you. You remember Mario Balotelli? Obviously played for Man City, played for um, Liverpool in the Premier League. Did he play for any other Premier League clubs or is it just those two? Sorry, sure say that again. This noise in my ear rolls quite loud. Mario, Mario Balotelli, obviously he played for Liverpool, he played for Man City in the Premier League. I don't think he played for anyone else, did he? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, it, it is a loan. It is a permanent loop. It's not a loan because they've already got two um, loan signings at Everton, so they can't have any more domestic loans. So it has to be permanent. Either that or they have to make one of the other loans a, a permanent. But uh, where was I? Um, yeah, so Mario Bellatelli. How many assists do you think he got in the Premier League? Probably. Probably less than double figures, I'm going to assume. Okay. Anybody in the live chat, give us a guess. How many assists did Mario Balotelli get in the Premier League? You will be impressed. You will be impressed. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Luke's got it. It's only the one, but it was quite a quite a good assist. Because you know what goal it was for, didn't you? You don't. You don't remember that famous bit of commentary from Martin Tyler. It was that goal. It was, it that, was that goal. goal was it? It was that goal for Aguero to win the Premier League. Only one assist he ever got, but fuck me, what an assist! <laughs> what a time to get it. Unbelievable. Did you know? Marcus you Brown know? has joined Middlesbrough from, oh no, has joined Oxford from Middlesbrough. He was a guy that was with us, wasn't he? I think he was, wasn't he? I'm sure he was. Hmm. They're interviewing Wes Morgan now. He's looking very dapper. No tie, I notice. Yeah, I'm I not, not looking as good as you, mate. Yeah, he should, should have got the yellow tie. That's what he should have done. Did you know that Boca Juniors got their kit colours from Sweden? No. Do you want to know the story? Yeah. Apparently in 1906, Boca Juniors played a team called Nottingham de Almagro. Both teams wore similar black and white kits, so they played a game to decide who would keep the colours. Boca lost, and they decided to adopt the colours of the flag of the first boat to sail into the port of La Boca. This turned out to be a Swedish ship, and that's why Boca have played in blue and yellow ever since. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't know that in the <laughs> I'll tell you what, Luke, it's getting to that point. It's getting to that point. This is just like, really? 
Can't we just even even just sign someone on loan? Anyone? I'd actually, uh, do you know what? I'd actually that, I'd Nick. probably get quite excited if we signed. I don't know, John Burridge, on on loan. I mean, he must be pushing seventy now, John Burridge. But he played for an awful lot of clubs. But he you never really played for us. One had it guy, didn't you? Just yeah, just anyone. <laughs> He, met, he modelled uh, himself answer, on Peter Shilton, he did. He did. Just to answer Mitch there, that was the, when they were doing the pre-season uh, tour of America, wasn't it? And he I got think, subbed off, didn't he? Um, who was the manager? It was... Mancini. Uh, Man, Man, Mancini literally lost his shit and dragged him off the pitch, didn't he? I think it was in the States, wasn't it? He lost his shit. Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, 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 American tour, yeah. Yeah, vaguely remember that. Honestly, yeah, another six and a half hours. If you think I'm sitting here, Neil, for six and a half hours, you are mistaken. I've got to disappear because my daughter's got training, so I'm probably going to be top whack. I'm going to be on here for another 50 minutes. Um, I was just about to be honest with you. I was thinking about getting some of the leaks. I'm bloody famished, and this is just absolute dog turd. What I might do is, I mean, what time are you back? Uh, well, by the time I get back and have something to eat, I'm probably not going to be doing anything till about half eight. Yeah, there or thinking, so the way, unless unless obviously something happens in the next couple of hours, I'm thinking we might just have to fucking knock it on the head for a bit, mate. Because we're just, you know, I, I think we're, we're I'm getting more practice. enjoyment out of these little random factoids yeah. that you and me are coming out with, and people in the live chat. And if you guys in, have got any random factoids, please do because I love them. Here we go. Do you want to, do you want to, this is a real good one. For you, you Duke. This is from the world of Dutch football. Did oh. you know, did you know, this is not sort of me just giving a question out. I'm just going to give you a, did you know, did you know that when Groningen were promoted in 1971, they had only conceded seven goals during the entire season. No. All seven goals were scored in seven different matches, but they didn't win the league. They came second. Crazy, isn't it? They conceded seven goals all, all season and they didn't win the league. How's your luck? Uh, you'd be losing your shit, wouldn't you? You probably would. You probably would. Let's have a look. Fabrizio Romano, what have you got for me, mate? Any any movement? Um, mm, well, the only things that he's added are uh, Dundee, Anel... Ahmed Hodzic has joined Bordeaux from Malmo on loan with an obligation to buy. Now, I've got a sneaking suspicion, if this is the guy that I'm thinking he is, um, James from the Anvil did a little piece on this guy. I'm fairly sure he's, he's he mentioned him. I'm almost certain. And it goes on to say that Phil Jones's loan deal from Manchester United has definitely collapsed. Uh, Where Dejang, uh, Bordeaux. Oh, yeah. Um, Dejan Kulusevsky, if I pronounce that right, has joined That's Tottenham the from one. Juventus. So, yeah. Yep. That's um, the loan, is that a loan? It ha doesn't actually say here one way or the other. Yeah, £10 million loan fee with a £35 million obligation to buy. Oh, yeah. If certain, a certain shit. Um, yeah. Now, hang on, Dave, a, a year and a half loan. This is what we was having a pop at our lot about yeah, for the... Um, yeah, Spurs have got the job done. Mm. Friends in high places. Hugo Ekatike deal collapsed. Yeah, Newcastle are pushing on Jesse Lingard. West Ham still interested too. Like I say, we might be interested, but I don't think United are going to do business with us. I think they'll do business with Newcastle, no problem. But... I don't see how that we're gonna. Ben Tacor is doing spuds. Yep. Subject to international clearance and a work permit. Hmm. Ludigretz Land Luton goalkeeper Simon Sluger. And apparently Luton have signed Villa's Jed Steer on loan. Uh. Now, here's one, right? Jean-Philippe Mateta, Crystal Palace. Uh, 
striker. Apparently he's going uh-huh. on loan, loan to a permanent. Um, oh no, sorry, uh, Jean Philippe Mateta's Crystal Palace loan to permanent deal from Mines is ninety nine percent loan. Right, okay, so they're making. He's currently there on loan. He's making it a a permanent deal. Sorry, I I thought he was going to Mines. I was going to say I'm sure they only signed him in the summer. But um, and apparently. Palace have had a second bid for Arsenal's Eddie Enketia rejected on Saturday, it says here. We need to be all over that, Rob. It's not going to happen. It would have. I would have thought, to be honest, I would have thought it would have happened by now. I mean, we've been linked with Batist, Batistuta, not Batistuta, Barbosa. We've been linked with Cabral. We've been linked with David. We've been linked with, you know, and, and what's happened? Precious nothing, you know. Were any of those seven own goals? I, I've got no idea. I've got no idea, Neil, as I say. Just a little, little factoid that I've got here in front of me. Um, cheers, Walshie. Thanks for thanks for hanging around, as I say. Cheers, mate. It's, it's been pretty turgid, to be honest with you. It's just nothing going on. Um, I think he will go on alone because I, th- I think he'll want to play football. And I think he'll be of the opinion that if it, if it's going on loan to Newcastle for the rest of the season before then reassessing his options in the summer um, or sitting on his ass at Manchester United, I, I think he'll go on loan. And I think that's the right thing. I think he in his heart of hearts, he'd probably want to come to West Ham. But I just don't see Man United are going to want to do business with us. So... You know, what can he do? Tell you what, look, I mean, I'm at a point now where I'm quite happily willing to bankrupt the club to go get our hands on Usman Dembele just to pay his wages to get something happening. Um, in answer to this one, the deadline is 11, but I believe if a club goes to the Premier League and says, look, we're 90%, we've got basically everything in place. It's just a question of get crossing the T's and dotting the I's. I think there is dispensation to get it done by a later date. Yeah. Uh, by a later time. Um excuse me. They have so to fill in a be right. Statement to, of intent, uh, intent or something. So, yeah, it's a statement of intent um that they have to they have to send. Here's a nice little factoid for you, Duke. You'll like this. Did you know that the first two players born in a reunified Germany combined for the World Cup winning goal in 2014. Is it really? Yep. Mario Goetze and Andre Schürrle were both substituted onto the field in against Sweden in 2010 to become the first two players born since Germany reunification to represent the nation. In 2014, it was Schürrle who assisted Goetze for the extra time winner against Argentina in the World Cup final. So say that again, they were the first two. They were the first two players born in a reunified Germany and they After combined the for, the, for the winning wow. goal. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy how things work out, isn't it? Does it say on the, does it say that they came from either side of the wall or I don't know. It doesn't say one way or the other, but they were the first two players born in a reunified Germany and they com- combined for the World Cup winning goal in 2014. So... I have to ask a question though. Why did they go, why did they go uh, north to south with a wall? Hmm. And then have east and west. Why didn't they go east to west and have north and south? I, 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 I've never. Yeah, but don't yeah. forget, it was it was when Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin all sat down and decided how they were going to chop the pie up, didn't they? And then, yeah, like, it is, you know, it, is, it, is, it, was, it was the Iron it's Curtain, around. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, ridiculous. What's happening downstairs? Anything interesting? Busy. Here we go. Can't believe Villa have got 
Chambers as well. Callum Chambers, yeah. Would you, would you be interested in him? I think he's yeah, quite yeah. injury prone. I think he's a decent player. I think still he's a bit injury prone. Would have still gone for it. I would have still taken a run at him, mate, just because at the end of the day, we're doing nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's where I'm at. Here's one. I tell you, here's a question. You guys in the live chat can get involved. There's only two players who have played in three European Cup finals for three different clubs. Can you name them? I've heard this one before. My brain just went, I'm not telling you. <laughs> two players oh, who have played yeah. in three European Cup finals for three different clubs. You may well be right, Luke. You may well be right, but... Oh, hey, I'll tell you what, this boy knows his stuff. He knows his stuff. Clarence Seydorf is indeed one of the two. Is that good dab? Is the other one? No. Clarence Seydorf won the European Cup with Ajax in 95. Real Madrid in 2000, AC Milan in 2003, and in 2007. So they're the three different clubs he appeared for. And there's one other player who's appeared in the European Cup final for three different clubs. I am stumped it. Do you want a clue? Yeah, go on. The other player is an ex-West Ham player. The other player is an ex-West Ham player. And knowing Luke, he probably now knows. He's going on Arsenal. a free, isn't he? Arsenal have never won the European Cup of Day. No, they never have. Closest they came was 06 against Barcelona. Partly, yeah, no. Part of me will go Liam Brady because I know he's played out in <clears throat> the um, he, Well, he played for Juventus at one point. That's, yeah, that's what I was going with. Um, Ooh, Samuel Eto. Good guess, but he, wrong. He played for West Ham. <laughs> well spotted. Yes, yeah, Samuel Eto never did play for West Ham. Because I think Eto played for Barcelona and Inter Milan. But I don't think he played for it. Well, he didn't play for anyone else. I know that. Because there's only two people. Seidorf is one. Oh, Luke. Luke's struggling with the second one. Alex Song. No. Paolo Futre. No. Neither of them. Neither of them. Three European Cup finals. Lamar? Bernard Lamar. Hmm. Guess no. what? It's not. No. <laughs> it's not Bernard Lamar. It's not That's Bernard right. Lamar. He smokes, smokes marijuana. I'm surprised there hasn't been more than just the two that have played in three for three different clubs. The way that players move around these days. Hang on, what's that? Tottenham, yeah, Tottenham signed Rodrigo Betancourt. Yeah, um, yeah oh, now. Javier Mascherano. No. <laughs> no, no, not Mascherano. Do you want to know who it was? Oh, hang on. No, 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 no. Yeah. Joe's coming with Zola. Well, no, he never played. He never played for us. He did manage us, but um, no, it's definitely not Franco Zola. 
three European <laughs> Cup finals, three different clubs, and he is an ex West Ham player. No, no, you're not. You're not. And if I didn't have the answer in front of me, I might have struggled. So you're not being oh, stupid. Luke. God's sake. In fact, you've done really well on these so far. Yeah, yeah, it's been brilliant. We're going to kick ourselves. Um, possibly. 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 Um, no, I'm, I'm absolutely stumped. Do you want to tell you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brook Bands and Metal in Both Legs have both gone with Alex Song, but Luke went with that earlier and he was wrong. So I'm afraid you are as well. Oh, Joe's gone Rio. Now, now, actually... This player does have a connection with Rio. So that's another little clue for you. He does have a connection with Rio. They they did cross paths. Oh, should I give you the nationality? Should I give you the nationality? I'm feeling generous. He's French. Canute. No. Someone's bound to get it. Someone's bound to get it. Three European Cup finals, three different clubs, ex West Ham player, and he did he does have a connection with um Rio Ferdinand. Uh, oh, he's got it. He got it in the end. It was Patrice Evra. Patrice Evra. He was a runner-up with Monaco. I love this game. Four. He won the European Cup and was runner-up as well. In 2008, he won it with Man United. Runner-up in 2009 and runner-up in 2011 with Man United. And he also appeared for Juventus in 2015. There you go. Wow. Patrice Evra. And of course, he later turned up at, at London Stadium. Was it after he got bad in France? Uh, yeah, I think it was. Another yeah, one here. Nicolas Tagliafico to Barcelona. Won't happen. No agreement with Ajax as they only wanted a permanent transfer and Barca were planning for a loan move. That'd be a player I'd be quite interested in. I can't yeah, well, lie. we were linked with him on the last window, Gatesy. Yeah, I'd be interested in getting him in. Decent player. Very good player. Um, and if anyone's interested, Carlisle United have confirmed that Zach Clough has left the club on a free transfer. Do you know what? I reckon we'll end up signing him. I'll take him at this point. <laughs> He won't cost us anything. He's 26. Uh, but it says he's no, it says he's expected to sign for an overseas club. So I think he's signing for a for a team in the Isle of Man or something like that. Um <laughs> have we re-signed Patrice Evra? Do you know what, Trev? Honestly, the way the way this transfer window has gone for us, Agreed. I I would probably and Brooke says he'd take uh he'd take Brian Clough. Young man. Have you ever heard the story that, that Mark Crossley tells on the circuit about a player called David Curry? Yeah, you told me, I think. You told Brilliant, me one now it? on a stream, yeah. Yeah. Have you bought an house in the Nottingham area? Well, not yet, boss. Mm -hmm. Let me stop you there, son. Don't fucking bother. <laughs> <laughs> I think he played four games. Oh, it was just crazy. Crazy, crazy. 
Um, didn't some kid at Hayes turn down Spurs? Yes. Um, I th- was it Hayes or Lewis? I thought it was. Those, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, down in down in East Sussex. You ever been to Lewis? No. It's nice. Sure. Nice little part of the world. Used to work around there from time to time. Nice little part of the world. Do you know what their um the name of their football ground is, Lewis FC? No. The dripping pan. Well, that sounds fortunate, isn't it? I've got no idea why. There must be a story behind it, but I know that their ground is called the Dripping Pan. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, well, nothing's going to happen. No, MLS side Real Salt Lake are close to completing a deal with Al Hilal for Colombian Gustavo Queller. This is the depths that we're plumbing now. This because there's literally fuck all happening. So we're having to talk about a guy going from the United States to somewhere in Dubai or wherever who's Colombian because we've got all else to talk about. It's ridiculous, though, Rob. And I'm getting, I'm getting more and more pissed off. You know, Burnley, Burnley have signed Vegas. You know, yeah. you've got, you know, Tottenham have got rid of Dembele and have signed this uh, Kulusevski and um, Bentacore. You know, um, Brentford have got Benteke, City have got Alvarez, and here we are just sitting there scratching our bollocks, waiting for something to happen. Madness. Although, here's one that might has a little bit of a, a, a tenuous connection with you. Well, well, it, yeah, it is. Um, Armenia Bielefeld, Duke. Yes. You're aware of them. Um, they are set to announce the signing of United States men's national team left back, George Bello from Atlanta United. Mm. There you go. There you go. And for those of you watching that, that wondering what, the tenuous connection is. Um, Duke's father My was from what well, Bielefeld, was just just outside Bielefeld, in a place called Detmold. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Um, he was born uh, in an army base. No, it's not, army Steve. Base. No, it's not. Hang on, just a moment. Since you ask, hang on a moment. Please come along and join the boredom. <laughs> just yeah, what do you do? Literally sod all happening. Might as well watch paint dry. We've resorted to just doing little random facts and crap like that. I did actually, I for, do you know what? I completely forgot. I said I was going to send Charlie the link as well. I, and I've completely neglected to do so. What an idiot. And I'm probably going to be buggering off in about half an hour. But yeah, I've, I've literally just sent it to him. Grab. If he gets it, he gets it. If he don't, he don't. It is what it is. Some grub will come back, you know. And like I say, unless while you're out, if something happens, I'll jump back on and go, yeah. oi, oi, what's happening? Oi, oi. <laughs> oh, hello. There's a photograph that has been put up of Deli Alley in an Everton shirt. Oh, really? Everton and Tottenham oh. are now signing contracts for Deli Alley deal. Um, free transfer. Wow. Free. 12 million euros after 20 games and bonuses for next year's. It could reach 35 to 40 million euros, but it's obviously dependent upon Delhi and Everton's performances. I'm not being funny. That is a potential bargain, in my opinion. Very much so. Very much so. That is, uh, like I say, initially it's, he's literally gone there for nothing. Um, if he plays 20 games for them, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll cost them 12 million euros. Now, if he goes there and let's say in those 20 games, it's not inconceivable. He could score, I don't know, eight goals. If he hits the ground running, he could get he could get eight goals. No problem yeah. at all. And that could be the difference between them. I, I don't think that Everton will go down. I seriously don't think they're in any danger of going down, in my opinion. But him coming in would just give them that little bit of a extra push a little bit further up the Premier League table. I think that's a that's an absolutely brilliant signing from Frank Lampard. Steve, how are you? Oh, I'm okay, mate. Uh, thoroughly, thoroughly uh, pissed off with deadline day, though. I can't believe... Try sitting here, mate. 
<laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I am sitting here now, aren't I? <laughs> Technically. Uh, yeah, I cannot believe that we haven't strengthened. I mean, okay, we've still got, what is it? Five, five hours left, is it? No, six there, hours there left. About, a whole yeah. six hours. But this is ridiculous. We got, we've got a chance in the Europa League. We've got a chance for top four. We're still in the FA Cup. And what have we done? Sod all. And I wonder, you know, like myself, Gatesy, you're a season ticket holder. And I think there's a bit of a, there's a bit of it that is very disingenuous to the season ticket holders who turn up every week, pay a decent whack mm. for our season ticket and go, oh, sorry, guys, we just couldn't get anything done. Well, we it's tried. just not good enough. <laughs> just as I say that, I'm just looking here on um, Sky Sports and... It's, there's a little piece that came up five minutes ago with the quotation, West Ham fans will be frustrated. And it's by a contributor from Sky Sports called Jamie Weir. And he's put here, it's looking like being a frustrating day and month for West Ham fans. If Jesse Lingard leaves Manchester United, a move to Newcastle is more likely. Would Manchester United really sell to a top four rival, which is exactly what I've been saying. No, um, that looks difficult to do. West Ham need to add players to an already thin squad. David Moyes has always been confident of adding two or three. They have the money burning in their pocket, but they haven't spent any. Who do you blame for this, Steve? Um, I think it's uh, part and part, to be honest. From what I understand, Moyes gave his request list in quite late this month. Hmm. So you've got to turn around and say, well, hang on a minute. You should have known that at the start of the month that I would have considered that to be the bare minimum. If my boss says, we've got a month to do this, I need your ideas. Mm. She's going to want my ideas at the start of that process, not right at the end. Yeah. To give her no time. Uh, secondly, Moise, Moise is always trying to, Improve the first team. Now, as laudable as that is, let's say, for instance, we got Origi in, which at seven million is surely a steal. But say we spent seven million on Divock Origi. Yeah. Now, okay, maybe he doesn't improve the first team, but he damn well improves our squad. You know, there's a safety net if Antonio gets injured. So why? I think the view from Moisey is as much as I love Moisey, and I think he's done a brilliant job, I think it's got to be a bit bigger and a bit wider that sometimes you just need to bring in players who will improve you overall. I mean, you can't honestly tell me we can't get in somebody better than Masuaku. You know... I, I Masu... do the job. Yeah, Masuaku is... Well, on the 15 year with no hands. No, no, not that, oh, not that. Right, sorry. You I'm, know, I'm I think the this. worst, the worst thing that happened, as far as Arthur Masuaku was concerned, was scoring that winner against Chelsea. Yeah, uh, possibly, yeah, because he now gets bought on, doesn't he? Yep. And also, you know, we've sold. Have we sold Longello to Nottingham Forest? Did he go? Um, I I heard something about a, um him going out the door, and I was like, what? So yeah. So, you know, the um, we've got Ben Johnson at cover on the at left back. And although he's infinitely, and I mean infinitely superior to Arthur Masuaku, mind you, next door's rabbit is infinitely superior to Masuaku on a football pitch. Um, you know, could we not have improved the squad? Because it's now a squad game. It's not a first 11 game. It's not like when I watched it back in the 70s, the same 11 would rock out week after week after week. You, There's too much pressure and too many demands now. So I think Moyes carries a can for the lot of, a lot of this. And then, of course, you've got David Sullivan. Well, we signed that rabbit indeed, Trev. Yeah, actually, he's a very nice rabbit, black and grey. But, uh, but, you know, it's easy to put in a 50 million bid for somebody 
knowing the knowing knowing me knowing you what's going on uh, nothing what? else we can oh, do is he back oh, what's going on in it's not me it's not me I didn't press it's anything. My hands are here. Are you back, around. Steve? I'm back. Yes, I'm back. What, it's probably what was going on there? Don't know internet as usual, but it's really it's really annoying. I pay a fortune for fiber optic, and it does this. Yeah, but nevertheless, you know. And then you hand over a list late. Late in the transfer window, and then you don't get the job done. I think is what Steve was going to say. I I think so. I don't know what's just happened there. Um, I, I don't know. Is, is, there, he, um, is it pound, Poundland was... Internet again? Poundland Internet strikes again. Horrible when that happens, though. When your internet starts dicking around, it's like, oh, for goodness' sake! Oh, I know that one. Oh yeah, yeah. You and me both, mate. I've had it a few times. So annoying. Well. Uh, Sky Sports' Lyle Thomas has come out and said it's worth noting that once Deli Alley leaves Tottenham, they only have four players remaining from their Champions League final starting lineup, which is uh, Larice, Kane, Kane. Scott. Yeah. And then Liverpool have all but one of them still there, which is uh, Van Alden, who's left. And then he goes on to say Spurs need to create a team and squad for the long term under Conte. And, and they don't seem to be doing anything of the sort. Hmm. Is, that, is that the dulcet tones of the Lewisham Constabulary? Lewisham, Lewisham Constables. Yeah. Doing the round. Let's change their horses out earlier. I was, when I was on the stream, we were all from all Because the police, the, police, uh, the police station across the road from yep. me, Rob, is obviously one of the biggest, if not the biggest in Europe. And it actually goes um, four floors down. And um, uh, oh. it has, is, I believe, up Steve's... to 200, 200 sta stables for 200 of horses. Steve's in the, in the private chat, Duke. He says he can see and oh, hear us stop. fine, but it's, <laughs> you're completely silent this end, my friend. Nobody can hear you. Uh, I don't know if you might want to come out and go back in. I don't know whether that's going to work. Control, alt, delete, reboot. Uh, what can you do? What can you do? Ah, uh, dear. Just having a look back on Sky. So Aaron Ramsey's in Glasgow. Looks like that's more or less a done deal. As I say, top. This, this is the thing that frustrates me. Tottenham have, are getting deals done with a manager that's gone in there relatively recently and they're on a similar footing to us in, in, right now. They're getting, they're um, getting, Gacy, I'm going to have to jump off a second. I've just, I've got my, um, I've got my area manager calling me. Let me just jump off and give him a quick call, mate. Is he in trouble? Probably not. See you in a second. <laughs> All right, mate. No worries. As I say, we're we're going to carry this on. Probably, probably did about half past at the at the absolute maximum. I, I was honestly when I woke up this morning, I I did hold out some hope that maybe there was going to be movement, that maybe something was going to happen, that there there was deals that were going on under the table, and David Moyes had kept his cards very close to his chest, and that we were going to. I'd, I'd have been quite happy with two signings and whether that had been a permanent and a loan or whatever, I, I don't know. But I had a little bit of hope in my heart, a little bit of optimism. And as I sit here now with the time on the clock, at around about five hours and 53 minutes left of this window. And there's my, my hope is dwindling. My hope is dwindling of anything coming through the door that fundamentally strengthens our chances of, of finishing in, in, at least in a top six position. I mean, just unbelievable. And Steve, are you, are you, you, you there, mate? Can yeah. you hear us? 
Can you hear me? Yeah, and I, I mentioned it earlier um, on on the previous one, Steve, and I don't know whether you was in there, um, but you're obviously on that like that Hammers Chat Addicts WhatsApp group. Yeah, and yeah, I put on Saturday about the um, one of the All Blacks, the the New Zealand rugby teams, um, fifteen staples, fifteen. Um, mantras if you will is that when you're on top of your game change your game you know you yep. use that sort of opportunity to to push on and there's no such thing as standing still you i mean geo said it you're either going forwards or you're going backwards there's no such thing as standing still because if you're standing no. still everybody else is 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 plowing past you so in reality you're going backwards anyway so there's no such thing as standing still but we we're not i mean how often in our history have we been in the last 16 of a European competition in the top six or so places of the Premier League gunning for fourth? I know you could turn around and say in, in the last month or so, maybe that's gone a little bit pear shaped, but there's still a, a yeah, hope there. A Why chance. are we not leveraging this to try and get players through the door? Because, well, First of all, I don't think Moyes likes doing business in January particularly. Um, and I think the I think the plan is to go big in the summer, whatever big means for West Ham. Uh, if we could get Calvin Phillips from Leeds, terrific. But this is all in the future, and it's all well and good living in the future. But it's the now you've got to deal with. Well, and we just it may well be that. Uh, but if we wait until the end of the season, it could be we finish eighth. Not only do certain players that maybe right now might look at as a more viable proposition, we finish eighth, maybe ninth, who knows? Somewhere around about that, our pool of players to choose from becomes a little bit smaller. Not just that, Steve. Do you honestly think Declan Rice is sticking around for a team that finishes eighth, ninth in the Premier League? Because I don't. I I tell you what, I think he might if we go big. Because what you can actually do is, and City did this, is you can get players in with big money. And that's what we'll have to do. But you see, it's a, it's a false pursuit at the moment because it's going to... if we. OK, let's say we finish eighth. And I still think we should finish top six. I mean, Tottenham have done nothing this window, have they? Arsenal have done nothing. Well, you say and that. They... They've made a couple of signings today. No, Spurs have made one, I believe. Uh, oh, Just it done be... it on loan. No, two. It's um, Betancourt and... Hang on, let me just scroll back. Uh yeah, uh, Dejan Kulusevski and yeah. the other one was um, Betancourt. But again, uh, one of them's on loan, aren't they? Hmm. It's still... The, it's still, it's, yeah, it's, it's still freshening it up. Yeah, I mean, in this window, I would have... If I didn't want to spend a lot of money, I'd have got Nat Phillips and... I'd have got a Regi in. That would have helped immensely. Didn't mm. need to do a lot more than that, and it wouldn't have cost a fortune. It well, they've let Phillips got... go on loan to a championship club. I mean, are you telling me that we couldn't have snipped in? Exactly. So, Phillips on loan, a Regi for £7 million. You haven't done a lot of your budget, and you have improved the side. Mm. I. What will happen is our first team is good enough. But those players, and um, you and I have seen it in matches, particularly in the Leeds game, looked absolutely knackered. And that's what will catch us out. You can't expect those players to produce at the level. I mean, the first game against Leicester, you and I were both there. We were terrific that day. We were fresh. We were absolutely on their game, and we've given anybody a game that day. Same against Chelsea. But mm. as the season's worn on, you've seen the cracks where players have got tired and we've lost a Bonner. And you think there's got to be 
a there's got to be oh, not, are we oh, back? You're back you're back yeah uh so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Earth calling Steve. Come in, Steve. Yeah, I can hear you. I hate my internet with <laughs> passion. Sometimes I can do these streams and they're fine. Other times, like now, I keep dropping out. So anyway, I th there's, two, there's two things that need to happen, in my opinion. Mm. And they probably won't happen until Krasinski takes over, if he does. But I think I'm hoping he does. That's One, about another 18 months then. Yeah, but one, Kratinsky is going to have to say to Moyes, right, he's going to have to manage him in this. He's going to have to say, right, I want that list on the first day of the transfer window. That is a requirement because ultimately he's in charge. He writes the checks. Mm -hmm. So it's it's no good Moisey turning up three weeks in the transfer window and saying these are who I want. Mm -hmm. just doesn't work. And secondly, you've got to have, you've got to get rid of this David Sullivan. Oh, well, I'll stick in an offer. I'll make it look good. But actually, I'll just come back with, oh, we tried. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I try to be a scratch golfer. I'm damn well not. <laughs> you know, yeah. it is, uh, it's crazy. You can try it and do anything. You can try and sit underwater for 10 minutes. You'll kill yourself, but you can try it. And it, I am so frustrated because, as I said, I first went over the bowling in 75. So I really am quite ancient when it comes to things West Ham. And this is the first time I, I've seen us in this sort of position with all the things I've seen us in a European final. I've seen this in quarterfinals of European, of the Cup Winners' Cup. But I've never seen this with a good league position as well. You know, I've never seen mm. the two go hand in hand for the first time ever in 50 years of supporting the Hammers. Yeah, we've now got both. For crying out loud, move forward. Don't just sit there and go, oh, it will be okay. Mm. It might be okay, but I, I have my doubts if Antonio's injured, we're stuffed. Well, that's, that's the doomsday scenario, and I, I can't remember who it was, but somebody mentioned it earlier, and I've mentioned it on previous streams. He's gone away for three games with Jamaica. Now, if we don't bring a striker in, what's to say that he plays his next game for Jamaica, pulls his hamstring, he's out for six weeks, well, we can't bring anyone in. So, oh, we're going to play Bowen up top. Now, I'm not saying well, that Bowen couldn't do a job, but that's not his preferred position that's not where you're going to get the best out of Jared Bowen and who's then going to replace Jared Bowen Yarmolenko or or he thinks Oko Flex is good enough but that's a hell of a gamble in my but he's opinion. not played a minute of first team football well yeah <laughs> yeah you're preaching to the choir here mate I agree entirely but Duke and I had a phone call earlier on and we were both saying mm. how hugely frustrating the whole thing is the one outside chance is if we got Lingard, and this is, I don't think we will, but if we got Lingard, well, just to that might salvage you a, something. Just, just as I came off, um, talked to the boss, I quickly chucked the, um, the sound up on Sky because they were talking about Lingard and West Ham and Newcastle. And they've come out and said, that Newcastle have gone back in with another offer for Lingard, another loan offer with um with a significant um, increase in their uh, bonus payment um, if they stay up. Um, and Man United have not even responded to it. So either they're thinking about it or they're just they're bored with even listening. And, um, and basically, they're refusing. They literally are refusing to do any business with us. As much as we keep trying to push the flat, the push the push the rope, and everything, and try and climb over this, you know, this uh, this barrier that they put up to stop us from having him, it really doesn't look like we. They're, they're, they're literally then, burning phone calls then, and everything else. They're refusing. 
then I have to say you've got to go you got to go out, you've got to do it now and get a Rigi in. Seven million, surely it's a no brainer. You know, you get you get a Rigi yeah, in. A Rigi, um, I mean I'd even throw the money down at minute. No. No but I mean Hang on, what's that? Uh, Arsenal have made it clear to Ferrari Bay a few minutes ago they have no intention to collaborate or pay part of his salary for Barca. <laughs> Blimey. Why don't we get him on loan till the end of the season? And he went out there, didn't he? Yeah, he's out there. Mm. Apparently, though, it wasn't It wasn't to talk to Barcelona, it was to visit family. Yeah, right. I'd have him on loan till the end of the season. You know, only thing that would concern me, I think, in terms of his skill set, in terms of his abilities, yeah, the only thing that would concern me would be, would he, would he be a disruption in the dressing room? But then again, I did wonder with Jesse Lingard twelve months ago. You know, oh, he's going to come in, he's going to do his silly dances, he's going to be buggering around on Instagram, this, that, and the other. And I was, I was pleasantly surprised. So, I mean, Duke and I were chatting about it earlier. I mean, all day, Claret and Hugh have been saying there's no chance we'll go for Ben Teke. I think we'll get Ben Teke. Really? I can see it happening last minute, yeah. And I'm not anti Ben Teke. He's big, he's horrible, he's a good header of the ball. For, to get us through at the end of the season, yeah, I'd have him. Because at the moment, let's face it, what we got? I mean, we were all poo-pooing getting Andy Carroll. I wasn't an anti-Andy Carroll purely and simply because I could see this happening. We yeah, need, I'll... we need bodies. Mm. Yeah, I, that I, I, are reasonably I wasn't reasonably competent. I mean, I I put it on the on the chat, and you'll bear me out, Steve. I mean, yeah, I I put it that I if it's a choice between Ant and obviously he's now latterly gone to to West Brom, so it's very much a moot point now, but. At the time, there was this, this sort of like rumour, could he be coming back to West Ham because he'd been spotted at the training ground? And I I just put it out there. I said, if it's a choice between Andy Carroll and nothing, then yep. Andy Carroll is the preferable option. However, if we as a team that at that point were fourth in the Premier League, last 16 of the Europa League, still in the FA Cup, if, if we are getting in on a pay-as-you-play deal, a 33-year-old injury-prone striker who we had for six years on 85 grand a week before, if that's if that's where we're at, then there's something is desperately, desperately wrong. The, the question is, you know, because we're not... Uh, Origi for me, Joe. Uh, yeah, Origi all day question. long. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, Benteke may be a poor man's haller, but is better than nobody, uh, which is quite worrying to say, actually. We're going, we'd rather have someone than no one. Mm. Um, the thing is, how the how are the board and the manager going to justify this? If we don't, if we don't make a signing, which I think is highly unlikely in the next five and a half hours, the fans are going to be quite rightly pissed off i know mm. i am you know because we go up there we have a beer we have a chat and it mm -hmm. it's great from the social point of view we all meet up we all have a laugh yeah. but ultimately what we're there for is to see our team do well on the pitch and move forward mm. we know we've got the money we know we're in a position to buy players why haven't we Well, better that if than I can just to jump in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Jacob Steinberg has come out and announced that he's a blue tick on Twitter. He's come out and announced that uh, Man United, as I said earlier, refusing to do business with West Ham as they see mm -hmm. us as a rival for that fourth place. Therefore, it leaves the path yep. clear for Newcastle. But Gacy, can I go over to your? You mentioned Delhi Alley earlier. Yep. And he's moved to he's moved to Everton. Can I just mm -hmm. cover how absolute fucking genius 
the Everton are on this transfer. Mm, agreed. They pay nothing. Yeah. They pay nothing for Deli yep. Alley this year, apart yep. from his wages, because the most games he can play for Everton this season is 18. And yep. they've agreed a £10 million fee for once he plays 20 games. Mm-hmm. So Everton yep. haven't got to pay anything for Deli Alley this season. Nope. If he plays two games at the start of next season, then yes, they've got a full cup, £10 million, pound, but you're already going to have next season's... Oh, again. You're already going to have... Oh, he's back You're going to have in place your your monies from your finishing for this season and your monies for your TV rights for next season. Um, that's genius on their part. That's absolute yep. genius that they pulled that one out of the bag. Yeah. And if they can do it, I mean, this is, a, this is a club that's not... In... Are you on about this one? That's the one I was about to say. Yeah. Van der Beek, yeah. done. And this is this is a club, like I say, their manager's been in for, what, 24 hours? And he's got two players through the door. Not even that, mate. Yeah. Ridiculous. Van der Beek and Eli Ali. And two top quality players. Let's not mess around. And two players that would do well to come in and play for us. Yeah, they've mm-hmm. gone into a team that are essentially struggling in the Premier League right now. Essentially struggling. But again, Brook Bro- Bond says it there. It's, it's, it's criminal. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And it's <laughs> our money. Let's let's not let's not sort of like say it any any other way. The money that they get either comes through the gate, from merchandising, or from people buying Sky subscriptions or whatever, i.e. it's coming from the fans. The money that they have coming in is our money. I don't know of too many West Ham fans that if we signed nobody in this transfer window would be okay with it. In fact, I've, I've yet to meet one. I wouldn't. But I think that's the likely scenario, Goatsy. Mm. You know, well, that... I mean, what we got less than six hours now. It's not looking good. Well, I must admit, I'm completely mystified by it. But th- this is the Moyes conundrum. Okay, he is brilliant. I mean, what he's done with us on the pitch has been exceptional. I'm not sure there's anybody else who could have done it. He has a real, it, it's like when it comes to substitutions almost, these are Moyes' weakness, signing players, because he is looking for perfection. And as we all know in this life, perfection doesn't exist. Hmm. Yeah, get the right player, the right fit, but, you know, you've got to have some leeway. And for everything he does on the pitch, and I'm very grateful for that, and I wouldn't be without him for a second, Mm-hmm. This is his Achilles heel. This is what he can't do. And well, he can. What, he just chooses not to. Well, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what the I'm way. Saying. That's the way I look at it, mate. That, that, and that is massively the way that I look at this. Is that you know we bought we bought Rob Newman in for a reason, did we not? And here we are, kind we of did. sitting there scratching our asses right now, now with with nothing going on. With nothing going on, tell me how. Tell me how right now, Newman is justifying his salary. Well, I suppose that in in fairness, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I mean, to be fair, and I'm just going to throw this one out there. How how do we know whether Rob Newman has not presented a dossier of players to David Moyes, David Sullivan, and said, "Right, here's a load of promising young and up up and coming players that we can get." for a relative pittance and that in two, three years time that they, they, they will, they will have improved and they will be worth 30, 40, 50 million pounds. So you'll, you'll make an absolute killing. They'll come in, they'll hit the ground running. They're, they're fantastic young players, blah, blah, blah. Here they are. How do we know that hasn't happened and that they've not gone? Now nah, you're all right. We can't be asked with that. We, we well, don't. From, from my understanding, and it was somebody on the uh, Hammers Chat WhatsApp group, mm. that 
Newman's actually done that. He's gone to Moyes. Bang. All those players do you do you well? Moyes has gone. Don't like any of them. Yep. So it's you know Rob Newman just I guess justifies his salary by presenting options. It's not up to him whether he acts on them or not. Yeah. I don't particularly blame Rob Newman for this at all, actually. No, I, I don't. I, the, for me, and from what I understand, also Sullivan has been pushing really hard to get signings in because he doesn't, he doesn't want to be blamed by the fans. So you've got to say the logjam is Moyes himself. Now, why? I mean, I think David Moyes is a very intelligent, very, very good manager. I think he's brilliant. But I don't get this at all. Unless there's a rabbit out of a hat in the next few hours, I just don't get what's gone on at all. Crazy. If I'm honest with you, boys, I really, really cannot see it. I can't. No, I think you're right. I really but cannot say, see it. Just, it just frustrates the life about, out of maybe me. About... I mean, but I can see it's going me... back live. Like, like we said earlier, we'll see we'll it out, but I don't see anything happening now. Five hours, 32 minutes. I really don't see much else happening now. No. I, if, but and it's a shame when the stream is going all on, wild works to be undone. When, the, when you two guys were on this morning, uh, I couldn't get on this morning, but... If you'd said to me then, we would be sitting here with this at this stage of the day, I'd have gone, no, we're going to get someone. You know, we will get at least one player in. It is beyond my belief that we're here. I'm not, as I say, I'm not surprised about it though, Steve. That's yep, that's, the really, that's the really sad thing is that, am I shocked that we're in the position? No. No, I'm not. No. But I do, I, I do think that, and as I say, I agree with you. I think that in terms of what he's done with the team on the pitch, in terms of what he did to get us out of the relegation mire that he inherited from Pellegrini, to then get us top six in the Premier League, to to then sort of like do what he's done so far this season, is is nothing short of a miracle in in my opinion. And yeah. for the play, for the people that are out there who are basically just sort of internet trolls, um, that as soon as we lose a game, you see them moise out. And I'm just like, seriously, you haven't got a clue. Um, in terms of, of what he's produced on the pitch, it has been remarkable. And I don't believe that there is someone that could have done with the tools that he had in terms of the playing staff when he walked through the door, in terms of budget, all the other bits and pieces to do what he's done, realistically, who who could come in and do a better job that we can no. realistically attract? We're not going to attract Guardiola. We're not going to attract Klopp. We're not going to attract Mourinho. We're not going to attract Conte. Though That tier of managers won't come to West Ham. They just won't. Um, no. So of the managers that we could realistically attract, Moyes is, is probably, not probably, I would say he is the best fit. However, like I say, I know people that are Everton fans that have turned around to me and said, this is, this is what he does. This is what he does. Don't be surprised about it. So I suppose it's one of those. I suppose you, you, you can't have one without the other. Do you know what I mean? I mean, would we rather have Manuel Pellegrini where he goes out and, spends money down the drain and sort of like, you know, I'll bring in Jack Wilshire, bring in Sebastian Heller, bring in Yarmolenko, bring in, you know, this player, that player, and hasn't got a, a Scooby Doo about the Premier League in, in at the uh, I mean, all right, I know you could turn around and say, how can you say he hasn't got a Scooby about the Premier League? He's won it. Yeah, but he he had a ridiculous amount of money to play with. He he walked yeah. into a team that had um, won the Premier League two seasons before, so a lot of the players knew the terrain and all the rest of it. West Ham was a different entity. Mm. I, you see, you've both met James, my boy, and mm -hmm. he'll bear me out. When we got Pellegrini and we got rid of Moyes, I said that was the wrong move, and I stand by that. However, however, this is the one bit 
that I don't get. I understand everything else he's trying to do. I understand what he's doing. I understand how he's doing it. And I think Kretinsky coming on board is going to be huge for us in the long term. Um, but this bit, this is a real weakness in what he does. And, you know, somebody somewhere has got to, you know, has got to get to grips with it. You would hope. Mm. But I don't think Sullivan has got the kahunis, if you like, to do it. But I do think Kretinsky will, because Kretinsky, if you look how Kretinsky's made his money, he's been very shrewd and he is, he's a strategic thinker. And that's something I think he'll apply more and more. But if he's, but if he was prepared to, you know, give money to help get Calvin Phillips in, then, you know, he is in. Hmm. You know, it's it's going the right way. Hmm. So, Chats, you know, I've yeah. I've got to disappear, Duke. I don't know if you're gonna carry on. It's 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 your call. I I but I've got to take my daughter to football training now. So, are um, you going to wear I, the tie, Gatesy? <laughs> no, I think I might. I might get changed very quickly. Um, yeah, no, I was going to say I'm going to have to fly because the boss wants to talk to me about uh, possible helping out of another pub. So I need to try and work out some details for that. Um, James, you get your little one to football. Let me know how she gets on. I was training, and it? it's not football. Um, yeah. yeah. What yeah, I will yeah. say is. Ed- Anything, if, if anything goes on, I'm going to keep my Twitter open and, and keep an eye yep. on, obviously, developments. If anything happens with West Ham, um, I'll, I'll jump straight back on with an impromptu live stream. Bosh, get it up and going. Um, I'll be honest. And then, uh, you know, if you want, mate, about eight o'clock or half eight, if you want to come and we go again for the last hour and a yep. half, two hours of, of this, then we'll do that, yeah? I'll right, join guys. in, boys. If you, I'm, I'll join in with your boys, so at least we can uh, yep. all three of us be miserable together. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, Cheers see you on lads. the other side, chaps. Cheers, yeah. lads. Take care. Bye. Yeah,